네, 반갑습니다. 추운 사실 블록체인 컨퍼런스는 so 블록체인 2023 is going to be a for defining web 3.0 through the paradigm shift of blockchain technology as well as discussing its future evolution. Blockchain technology is undergoing a fundamental shift based on the introduction of the SaaS engine and mainnet technology, which is emerging as a third generation blockchain. We will clarify the task of evolving next generation blockchain technology and throw lights on the industry's future. Today we are providing simultaneous interpretation in English and Japanese and today's live stream across the globe. And I would like to welcome all of you to the SASA Blockchain Conference 2023. Before the opening remarks, I'd like to introduce the distinguished guests. If I call your name, please stand up and make your bow to the rest of the participants. And please welcome them with a big round of applause. First distinguished guest today I would like to introduce is Professor Emeritus Kim ki hung of Gyeonggi University. He has been devoting himself to nurture the talents and he is serving as the president of Blockchain Forum, Global STF Forum, and now Korea Digital Innovation Network. Next, we have the chairman Kumaki Taro of OWA Group. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Now we are joined by Branch VP Mario Huawei Cloud has been providing the virtual networks for the operation of our own nodes and has been operating and collaborating with the Seoul Labs. Now we would like to invite and welcome and introduce the CEO Jung Joo-po of Blockchain Today. The Blockchain Today is going to be the media host for today's conference. And next, we are joined by the CEO Ma Sang-yong of TV Tech, the blockchain marketing company. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. And lastly, I would like to introduce the CEO Ijeong, who are the friends who created and developed the SASE blockchain. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Thanks for the warm welcome, and I can see that it is really being heated up, and I can see a lot of participants who are here today, but because of the time constraint, I would like to ask for your understanding that I am running out of time to introduce each of you. Now, I would like to declare the opening. As I open this conference, I'd like to ask for your big round of applause for the new tradition of the blockchain that has also blockchain conference in 2023. Please give a big round of applause.
네, 멋진 yes, 개막 영상을 함께 보셨는데요. 열기가 정말 뜨겁게 느껴지는 순간입니다. 유튜브 실시간 스트리밍 서비스를 통해 세계 각국에서 동시에 관람하고 계시는 분들께도 이곳 현장의 뜨거움이 전해졌으리라 생각이 듭니다. 멋진 개회사의 순간을 함께 만들어주신 오늘 청중 여러분께 다시 한번 감사의 말씀을 드립니다. 이어서 축사가 있겠습니다. 첫 번째 축사를 해주실 분은 앞서 소개해드린 김기흥 명예교수님이십니다. 김기흥 교수님께서는 경기대학교 명예교수님으로 블록체인 포럼 한국디지털혁신연대 글로벌 STO 포럼 회장을 역임하고 계십니다. 큰 박수로 무대 위로 모시겠습니다. 안녕하십니까? Good morning, everyone. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am the president of Blockchain Forum and I am Kim Ki Hoon, professor emeritus at the University. First of all, I would like to extend my gratitude to the Seoul Labs and especially the CEO of the Seoul Labs, Chang Do Hee, and the CEO Chang Ji Pil. And other participants and experts who are contributing to the development of this industry and who are the host of the Sasa Blockchain Conference 2023. In the era of the Web 3.0, we are here under the theme of the catchphrase of Kamut. We are going to define the blockchain and we are going to seek a new opportunity for the future of this industry. Sasal engine and mainnet technology will be the base for the Web 3.0 and the directions will be discussed. And the ripple effect of this blockchain will be discussed. So it is going to be the opportunity to discuss and ponder what's coming up next in this industry. The blockchain will be in another form to us in the future, so we'll take a look at that. And we also need to take this opportunity to teach you how it's going to transform our lives. And what I would like to mention that this will be the very valuable opportunity to define what it is and how it is going to transform our lives. Web 3.0, blockchain, AI, as well as digital assets are transforming our current and future and this is going to be the new paradigm shift for the future as well. It is going to change and alter the future experience and based on the decentralizations, Web 3.0 will have a new form and developed form in the future. And it is going to strengthen, it is going to strengthen the security and privacy. And it's going to provide the pathway of the trust. Blockchain is going to improve the security and the privacy of the online transactions and it's going to contribute a lot to the development of the trust. Distributions and decentralization will enhance transparency and efficiency. This year, blockchain contributed a lot to improve our daily lives. And this, the first starting point will be this is the SASA Blockchain Conference 2023 and Chang CEO Chang Do Hee Seoul Labs and the other steps contributed to this by developing this very important SASA engine and technology. Please give them a big round of applause. Recent buzzword is AI and ChatGPT. These brought a revolution to our daily lives and the way we think, the way we live, and the natural language processing will improve and create more opportunity to use and create our creativities. 
우리 정부가 발표한 SDU의 가이드를 통해서 우리 정부도 디지털 자산을 이제 제도권으로 끌어들여서 증권업뿐만 아니라 국민들도 새로운 금융혁신 내지는 SDU를 새로 발전시키고 일반 투자들도 여기에 디지털 자산을 기반으로서 새로운 자산 가치를 증식시키기에서 새로운 제도 형성을 하고 있습니다. 이 모든 기술과 금융, 그다음 현실이 어울려져서 여러분들이 새로운 투자의 기회를 마련하게 될 장면으로서 그러나 우리의 여기에 또 하나의 책임이 따르게 됐습니다. 보안과 개인정보, 인력인 사용, 그리고 또 취약계층에 대한 더 포용적인 사회를 위한 다 같이 노력이 필요합니다. 아무쪼록 웹 3.0 시대, 대체적인 시대에 블록체인 사실이 추가하고 있는 기술 지원, 각종 블록체인 웹 앱 개발 및 서포트 지원, 컨퍼런스 운영을 통해서 이와 같은 생태계 확장을 will contribute to expansion of this era. And I would like to ask for you to put your wisdom and path strength together to weather through these difficulties for the better future to transform our lives and future. Lastly, I would like to extend once again my gratitude to all the participants who are here today despite your busy schedule. Thank you very much. Please give him a big round of applause. It was Professor Emeritus Kim Gyeong of Gyeonggi University, and he opened today's conference with a congratulatory remarks. Please, I would like to thank him for giving us a very good congratulatory remarks. Now we are going to have another congratulatory remarks from Dr. Song Hye Kyu. Professor Song Hye Kyu, give a round of applause for the graduate of Gyeonggi. 하고 계십니다. 송인규 교수님께 축사를 청해 보도록 하겠습니다. 네, 안녕하세요. 고려대학교 송인규입니다. 어, 저는 늘 강의하는 버릇이 있어가지고요. 축사는 잘 못하고 오늘도 강의자료처럼 어, 준비를 했습니다. 근데 어, 저도 별명이 그, 어, 무슨 수 머신인데요. 컨퍼런스 머신입니다. 여기 앞에 계신 우리 정지필 대표님하고 어, 컨퍼런스 like 정말 많이 개최했는데 아니 저는 이런 오더토리움에서는 컨퍼런스 할 생각을 못해요. 천 명을 모은다고 하면 이건 어마어마한 그런 어, 네트워크가 조직이 있지 않으면 불가능합니다. 오늘 대단한 행사를 준비한 어, 사실 블록체인한테 다시 한번 어, 축하의 말씀을 드리겠고요. 네. 그, 저는 어, 고려대 교수가 된지 10년 됐습니다. 겸임 교수입니다. 겸임 교수. 겸임 교수는 1년 계약직이에요. 1년 계약직이라서 제가 고려대학교 총장님하고 계약을 9번을 그동안 했습니다. 이제 간당간나 하는 것 같은데. <웃음> 어, 그래서 지금 고려대학교에서는 이제 그한 학기는 기술 투자와 M&A 강의를 하고 한 학기는 블록체인 트랜스포메이션을 강의하고 그리고 이번 학기부터는 ESG 강의를 합니다. ESG 블록체인하고도 굉장히 좋은 공부를 하고 있습니다. 그래서 최근에는 이제 블록체인을 하다가 블록체인이 메서답션이 되는데 약간 시간이 걸리는 것 같아가지고 이제 인공지능들도 동시에 하고 있고요. 제가 저를 어 이게 화면이 왜 이게 이게 나오죠? 어, 화면이 좀 잘못 나온 것 같은데요. 아, 조금만 더 기다리겠습니다. 그 그래서 그 제가 저를 소개할 기회가 되게 많아가지고 앞장에서는 다음 중 사실이 아닌 것 것은 해가지고 이제 소개를 했는데 사람들이 사진이 사실이 아닌 것 같다고 하는데 좀 많이 다른가요? 오늘은 어, 사실 블록체인이 메인넷이기 때문에 음, 여러분들한테 메인넷을 아주 간략하게 글로벌한 거를 소개를 하고 그리고 어, 제가 파이낸스 교수입니다. 제가 이제 어, 교수가 되기 전, 전에는 그 마지막으로 무정사업본부에서 투자하는 일을 했었고요. 무정사업본부는 그때나 지금이나 
이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이
So now there's no way for the SEC to refuse ETFs, but if you have any more. So right now it's a matter of time. Maybe early next year we will have the spot ETF approved by SEC. And if the spot ETF is approved, then what will happen? I'm very curious about the future. Now the material is depleted, so the, the price will be going down. That's one of the expectations. But I think more capital will come in, and there's a possibility of a, a bigger market to be created in the future. Now, one of the more important things is for the millennial generation, rather than gold, they prefer Bitcoin. So from now on, maybe Bitcoin will be the asset that everyone will have, will hold. So one of the reports also said that millennial, if they start to buy Bitcoin, that Bitcoin price will be going more than uh, 10 billion won. So I asked a question to Chat GPT. Why do you think the Bitcoin the price will be increased if it is approved as a spot ETF? And Chat GPT said that the BlackRock or the big entity organization, if you go to Coinbase and the Coinbase, the BlackRock, it's really hard to take in. The Coinbase, they it's difficult for them to purchase Bitcoin and just do some trading. So if spot ETF is approved, then more asset will be coming in and it will be better for the market. So I think it will be one point of it that make, they can make the market bull. So more things will be on the blockchain. Anything that you can imagine in the world can be digitalized and can be made as a digital asset. That's one way to put it. Now what we are seeing is that AI and image and everything can be created by AI. Within mere one minute, you can create this kind of image. And blockchain will also evolve and develop further thanks to the AI. The basic coding, if you make a request to ChatGPT, for example, issuing a token, if you make that request to uh, the chat GPT, then the AI can do the job very easily. The blockchain, could, because of that, can be radically improved in the future. So AI education is very crucial and is something that we are focusing on. So do you, uh, if you uh, know this uh, cartoon, uh, there's a Chinese legendary novel, then if they take out one of their hair, uh, then uh, it will create another uh, body of themselves. That is kind of a thing that what you will have in the future uh, that is called avatar, that avatar by AI can be trained further. So 24 seven, even if you're sleeping or you're playing and doing other things, they will do the work for you. Of course, those avatar will study with the AI in this metaverse universe that will trade with digital asset. What is based on that is the mainnet of blockchain. That is the future that I imagine. And I hope the SASA blockchain play a key role in this future. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Please give him a big round of applause. It was Argent Professor Song in -kyu. He prepared his materials to share the insights. And I think it was a very inspiring presentation to all the participants who are here today. Now, I would like to invite the next presenter for the congratulatory remark, adjunct professor Kim sung Kwon from Hanyang University. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. The professor Kim sung Kwon is working as an adjunct professor at Hanyang University, and he is also working as a director for the blockchain commissions. And please welcome him with a big round of applause. I didn't expect to have very large participants. We, our associations host a lot of conferences, but we had a very two wonderful presenters, and I would like to keep my remark very short. And I studied in Germany when I came back to Korea, and I was talking about blockchain. 
and many people were like looking at me some kind of weirdo because maybe I, I studied in Germany and I learned something weird because so many people view and saw me as a weirdo. It means that, that the blockchain was very new to Korea at the time. But for the past three years, we went through the crypto winter. It was a very long, cold winter for the crypto industries. However, I, believe, I can see that this industry is revitalizing. And it was a very difficult time for the blockchain because of the insufficient institutions or the laws or the regulations, if you will. However, starting from the EU, I believe that the institutionalization movement will be spread. It. And the, recently, the United States who is the leader in the finance industry. It's going to accelerate its effort. And ETF is going to be passed maybe next year. So if, if that happens, I believe that institutionalizations will be backing this industry. So I can see that the possible revitalization of the industry and this is going to be the very fast. And as Professor Kim gi mentioned, the, uh, we, the, our government is also putting an effort to institutionalizing SEO. And the CEO Lee jong the CEO Chang do he are hosting very excellent opportunity to introduce this technology, and I believe that this conference is very timely. So I will keep my remark very short. I expect a great development in this industry. That wraps up my presentation. Thank you. Please give him a big round of applause. He, it was a very valuable remark which he is contributing a lot of strength to the journey that is contributing the innovation development of the blockchain technology. I would like to thank him. And we were graced by the Professor Kim ki hung Professor Song ying Kyu, Professor Kim sung Koon, who delivered congratulatory remarks. Please give them a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Now, we are going to have the keynote speech by the CEO Lee jung from Arty Friends, the inventor of the Sasa blockchain engine and mainnet. He is going to have a keynote speech about technical value and challenges of blockchain. In the history of the blockchain and the uh, cryptocurrency, we are going to interpret it in the uh, technical value and we're going to have uh, the assignment that we have to set as a target for future blockchain. We are going to invite CEO Lee jung -woo with a big round of applause. Good morning. I am Lee jung -woo from RD Friends. Thank you very much being here. Despite your busy schedule, we have a lot of audiences coming to the conference today. Thank you very much. And we also said that uh, it is a huge coincidence that if you uh, can see a person once in a lifetime, just one uh, bottle of beer shared last year was the starting point for us to have a business together. Thank you very much to CEO Chang Du He to make this conference possible. It's been six, six years for me to focus on developing blockchain technology. So my perspective and the actual perspective of the people who are interested in blockchain, our perspective can be different. So today, I'd like to talk about my perspective toward blockchain. And from my perspective, how the blockchain will be evolved and developed, and what is the assignment ahead of us, that these are things that I'm going to talk to you about. So try to flipping out to the next slide, but it doesn't work that much well. So there's a zinc all the time in the conference like this. Uh, 
find it. Really, it doesn't work. It's not working. Battery is not Looks like it's out of battery. So, yes, while we are preparing another clicker, I will just continue my keynote speech. I believe the blockchain technology is very efficient. That's why it is not going and follow the footsteps of the dinosaur, it's keeping alive until now. Uh, there's a person uh, who I always say that uh, who can see the future. And uh, he said that human consistently evolve in a very efficient way. The blockchain, just like Bitcoin, if it is not exchanged, if blockchain was, if you have an experience using blockchain as a technology, you can see the blockchain is very, the the Bitcoin is very slow. But still, if you use it in technology, it will take about one and a half hours to transmit money. But still, it's something that everybody is using. So let me continue. The Bitcoin and Ethereum were first and the second generation, and the third technology is the Sasso. The reason why we are inventing and we are working on Sasso for transmitting uh, money, it took about one hour for blockchain to transmit it. And Ethereum is a little faster, but it also takes one and a half minutes. Only then can we have the the satisfaction that the, the money is transmitted. But still, you have to think about this. If you use blockchain to take a cab and try to settle your payment, and you settle uh, the payment with the blockchain, and the taxi driver will hold your hands and say that, wait for about a, an hour. And I have to wait about an hour to make the settlement completed. Then we cannot use it in real life. So our technology is Hasso, is the one that we are developing, targeting on commercialization of the blockchain. That's what we have been working on. And in the middle of the process, we had Ethereum, and there were some uh, possibility of the applications. So we tried to comprehensively combine those application possibilities in Hasso. I'm very uh, moved and touched right now because I saw this photo here. This was a coffee shop located in Banpo area in Seoul. And here it says that Hassel, it takes only four seconds for you to use it to settle the payment to buy a coffee. And I attached this photo here because it shows how in reality we can use the Sasso blockchain. So commercialization is just around the corner. And historically, how it, it has been developed and from the perspective of the efficiency, what kind of technical value does it have? This is something that I want to talk about to bring you guys to the future that I'm heading to. Yes, it's working now. So the Sasu, just in this morning, so it has uh, about uh, 19,600 uh, nodes. Here, I'm very anxious about this one, but it is holding on very tight. And within uh, that much of nodes, and in a mere four to eight seconds, the payment will be and settlement will be completed. So we believe that the trilemma that have been uh, the headache of the blockchain has been completely solved in Sasu. So uh, the blockchain was started from the cryptocurrency, which is very efficient technology. In order to confirm the settlement, it takes about one hour, but the 
The first reason why it was invented back in uh, uh, the, the period when we had Lehman Brothers crisis in order to have the bailout, it was a way to criticize the moral hazard during the bailout. But that was technically very efficient because for a dollar, it takes about five seconds and saved very safely in the bank. The block, the, the Bitcoin, it takes more than an hour to transmit it. But if it is lost, then nobody will take care of it. So how efficient it is, then why do we call it efficient? We still call it efficient because on the other side of the planet, the person that you just met in the chat, if you want to send the money to him and he does not have the Korean account in a bank, then you have to transmit it internationally. You can send the money in an hour, which is very efficient technology. And that technology is being used like this. In Russia and Ukraine, Ukraine war, the, the sanctions are being imposed on Russia from US. The gas and other resources, even if the US tried to put sanctions on Russia, there's nothing US can do. And here, the technology is not something that you can control in a centralized format that is some recognition the U.S. finally has. And in the past, the institution tried to, institutions try to put on hold on it and try to control it as much as possible. But right now, it's uh, the U.S. came in in fourth in the rank uh, in the amount of BTC that it is holding. It has about 207,000 BTC. And such Bitcoin, in order to keep its asset, it is very efficient. Even if the countries that try to control it, nobody can stop it. And now, those who uh, see, uh, saw these characteristics first back in 2010, uh, they start to make their own exchange. And then one person used 10,000 Bitcoin to really buy pizza. But if you calculate it in the Korea, in current, current, current amount of the Bitcoin, it is about... 400 billion worth of pizza to buy two, uh, two boxes of pizza. The ransom was really popular back in 2013. So there's a ransomware. Uh, your files are all kidnapped to me, and in order to release them, you have to send me this amount of Bitcoin. But it takes about an hour to transfer money internationally, and also there's no way to control uh, that transmission. So it is a really efficient way to uh, use the money for the ransomware. So in the time that the ransomware was very popular, so at the moment, the uh, Bitcoin amounted to about a thousand dollars just a momentarily and now it was proved as uh, at the value yeah, as a currency now we had a uh, ethereum maybe we can use it not a currency but other ways but its operation maybe we can uh, put program code not a lodge in the block itself so here, the Ethereum left the value that anybody can create the currency and provide the way to the world. The Ethereum, it takes about 10,000 won or 5,000 won for a fee to transmit money. But if you are taking risk of paying that much of fee with the ERC within five minutes, you can create a system of a whole bank 
It's a very efficient system. Anybody can have their own massive bank infrastructure. So everybody tried to use it as an application to have their own business ready and maybe try to have their own currency. That's the time that we right now are heralded in. But everyone says that they can do anything with a smart contract, but there's a one issue, that is the speed. Speed is really important. In the past, in the internet, if you want to load a, an image, we had to wait about 10 seconds. We didn't even imagine about seeing a video online, but the internet speed was heightened, and now the YouTube is something that people can see and enjoy every day. Then YouTube have its own value. So speed is really key. That's why Ethereum, it gave up the decentralization, so you went to the scalability and speeding up, which is a shame, I believe. Because in my sentiment, if it is installed, then it's done. Technology is technology, currency is currency, asset is asset. It have that independent operation. That kind of splitted operation is something that people can be relaxed and use freely. But now, in order to join in the technology, one has to purchase Ethereum, Ethereum which is a little uncomfortable for people to use it. The reason why I'm thinking it is a shame is that because we did have our answer already. Back in 2016, when we first did that, we had three assignments. Block, the creation was really slow, and the capacity is unlimitedly uh, increased, and the reward is concentrated in the small number of participants. So the uh, POS was the starting of the discussion uh, from the POW. So I was uh, really uh, sad to hear that. So we started this tussle to think about the technology is technology, we have the separation. So when I looked into the issue, the reason why the speed was very slow because of the mining. The POW, the proof of work, everyone can do the mining and people can install it. Once they click the button, the computer will run it itself and do the mining. It takes a while for each of the block to be created 10 minutes. And if six blocks are ready, then we will say to confirm, then one hour it will be confirmed as completed. And for those people who are supporting the POS, the proof of safe, uh, stake, then the partial uh, decentralization, they already recognize it as a centralization. So these POW and POSS had a very competitive discussion. But I already knew the answer. The answer is the combination of the two. In order for us to do the validation, we didn't have to buy 32 Ethereum. We had a solution that once the mining is success, succeeded, then we can recognize it as a creation. We had an easy answer to combine the two. Once you do the mining on the Sasol, Sasol is not a single chain. It is a configuration of the two different chains to have the service and the decentralization in each of the track. So while doing the decentralization, we also can keep uh, the speed up high. So that was an easy solution. And the second is that everyone had to have the same thing. So we had to have unlimited capacity in the storage, it was, which was an issue. We solved the speed issue, and we had uh, 1,000 or 2,000 DPS. And three months later, each of the server took up about one terabyte. So it will stop. In order, so if people talking about the 10 DPS without solving the issue of uh, storage, that means that they didn't have done it yet, haven't done it yet. So if we go exceed the 10,000 uh, DPS, then all the servers we have stop. Those who are talking about that uh, way, they, I, pre I am pretty sure they haven't done it yet. 
Maybe you can uh, think about it in a way that we can abandon those things that have been um, in the past. But still, if you think about it, the personal information stored there, their personal information took up about 10 terabytes. If you are not talking about the distributed storage, then we cannot solve this issue. So Nakamoto Satoshi, Amy once said that Satoshi has already disappeared, but I believe that Satoshi already concerned about this one. That's why the way of the Bitcoin, it was taken already into account to do the distributed uh, storage. I will not go into detail, but for SASO, we have the uh, common storage and the separated storage. And we for the common storage, we will see the validation and authenticity of uh, the uh, creation. And we solved this issue um, of the rewarding only a limited amount of people by doing it. So we can give all the rewards to the um, more people so that more people can uh, participate in the mining. So it's not something that you can get the reward once you mine. So the miner can only see their own data, so they will have basic reward, but other people can also see the reward once it is validated. So the speed and the storage and the reward, all three issues were solved in Sasil blockchain. Now, it's a little slow now, so our target is so the, the conventional IT system, we hope our system, the speed is the same with the con uh, conventional one, maybe 0.6 second uh, for the network latency, maybe it can go up to 0.8 second, maybe 1 to 1.2 second. This much of the latency, we will recognize it as real time. So that is our goal. I'm not sure whether how many of the hard fork we will have, but our target is hit this, and we believe that this will be possible. And once blockchain is commercialized, the third um, uh, nations who does not have capital to create their own bank system, the Africa or uh, Southeast Asia, they can use this blockchain as a way to replace the bank or uh, court or the validating the document at a very low price. So that is the future that I'm expecting. And one more thing that we discovered we solve the storage issue, so we can put all the information in the block. We didn't have any issue. So we went to another level. The code, if it is uh, hundreds of megabytes or uh, even bigger, then maybe we can, we'll split them and then put it in the storage, and we will bring it back to run uh, the program. So we uh, did a test. This is not something that we did a test on the mainnet, but in a separate. So we confirmed that Minecraft can be operated smoothly. So in the future, maybe now the network contribution methodology will be from graphic to hard disk, but we will have another transition from hard disk, disk. Maybe for AI computation, it takes a lot of graphics. Maybe all the people around the world, they will not use their computer 24-7. So we will borrow their computer system while it is sleeping. Maybe they will contribute a little in the network, and they will get some reward. Maybe in the future, we will have that kind of world to be unfolded. That is the vision that we have. So it is called that universal computer that we are imagining as a vision in the future. So you can think about it. So chat GPT can do the learning with about thousands numbers of the computer to compete against the humanity. But what if uh, the six billion computers around the world can help ChatGPT to do the computation. 
뭐 If the world is coming, the AI communication or tracking interface or other fourth industrial uh, renovation that we are calling, thanks to the blockchain, can have a leap forward. That is my imagination. But to tell you the truth, our goal is the design. Our in base on design, we have uh, the logic that can go up to 4 billion computers. But our concern is that what if it really works? The speed, speed is not consistent enough. Yes, I know that it is a little unstable. Sometimes it goes only 0.4 seconds, but sometimes it goes all the way up to 0.9 seconds. Sometimes this distribution is a little difficult, but while developing it, one of the biggest challenges that I'm facing is that based on the decentralization, there was nobody who made their solution. And also, our conventional laptop, we do all the operation within my own, my own laptop or computer. But if I can operate my program by borrowing others' computer, nobody made that kind of hypothesis before. So there's nothing we can use while developing Sasso. So some of the codes, even if we ask the question to ChatGPT, because nobody have invented them that kind of code, so ChatGPT cannot even give me the so there is a, a huge and famous pro, uh, saying that said that don't reinvent the wheel, just realign it. But Sasso had to do it. Somebody had to invent the wheel anyway. And once it is completed, then I think the speed, convenience, and other thing can be possible by doing the hard work. Then after that, we will open the code to the public. Once it is completed, our first goal will be completed. Once that is done, just like the company like Seoul Labs on Sasso blockchain, they will create their own um, assets. So once our first goal is completed, for those who are using blockchain, those who are doing the business, this is some kind of assignment uh, uh, for them to solve. Once that decentralization computing is completed, the simple web, Blitten board, shopping mall, and the transportation system all can be replaced with the SASA blockchain. There are, these are the old markets, always have some kind of big um, uh, operators already in the market. So what would be the uh, advantage of blockchain when it is used? The one of the biggest advantages would be the protocol or the system that have been used. The one that the company A is using, the company B can use it together. That is a big advantage. For example, when you send an email, if you send an email from Google account, then you can get it from the neighbor account. But from Kakao Talk to Telegram, you cannot send the messages to one another. But what if and the decentralized computing is possible, and if they share the same protocol, even if the messenger itself is different, they can send messages to each other. Still, we will have some big uh, companies in the market then how do you think those big companies will um, would allow it to happen? For example, so there's a Google. If Google adopt this technology and provide such services, I don't think Kakao Talk will survive. If such technology will be uh, evolved further and further, then maybe more things, the bank, public services and weather forecast, all the service will be combined into one here. I have told you as if it's all very easy and it will happen in a moment, but I think it will take time. But still, if you, you will think about it in the long run, it will be not that long. So now it is only natural for us to see the images and videos on the internet. But when you think about in the internet in the first uh, generation, once you uh, turn on the internet, you cannot use the phone anymore. And one way, the, when you click the Nate button in your cell phone, 
the money that you have to pay will be increasing um, very rapidly. But right now, if you think about it, internet is very easy. If you click the button, the chat GPT or AI create uh, writing or image or everything. So those who are inventing those technologies, it will not only be me or other people, if you uh, wait a little, then everything will be solved. But each and every phase, those who adopt to the business, those are the ones who earn money in the market. And the killer applications are being adopted in the market, and they are being highlighted by people. So our software technology, we think the blockchain and the business are two different things. And so, yes, so. so many people call it Sasa coin, but it is not Sasa coin, it is so. So many people are calling it as coin, but value is value because it is used. If somebody is using it and doing in the business and earn money, then it has its value. So those who are seriously interested in Sasser, just like a partner like Seoul Labs, and we, we have more partners like uh, Seoul Labs, then many people will sense it that blockchain is finally being commercialized. So our long-term goal is that the blockchain, somebody will think it as a capital for investment, and somebody will call it as a way or resource for business. But it doesn't have to be attacking each other. Rather, with blockchain, maybe we can work together to find a way to earn more money and I hope we can create that kind of very virtuous culture in the future. And in the future, I hope you can give us huge attention and support for us to have a huge development. Thank you very much. Please give him a big round of applause. It was the CEO Lee Jung who delivered him a speech. Please give him a big round of applause. Following the Bitcoin and Ethereum, the Sasol mainnet is, has been already developed to contribute to the summarization of the blockchain technologies. It increased our expectations for the brighter future of the blockchain. Now, I would like to introduce EJ, in Vice President of RD Friends. Please give him a big round of applause. And he has been working on the commercialization of the Sase blockchain in cooperation with the CEO. And please welcome me with a big round of applause. Good morning. I am the Vice President of Board of Friends, and I'm Izein. Sandy, before you, I feel so moved. I believe not many of you heard of our company, Art of Friends, before. Well, it was a very small company, and we didn't really do the marketing before. With the CEO Lee jong -ho, we started with a very, in the very small office. And we spend all day talking and talking, and one of them is what I'm going to share today. So I, my title includes a metaverse. So it is very difficult to exclude this topic of metaverse from today's conference because many people talk about metaverse. And Sasol, as Lee jong pointed out, and the ultimate directions, orientation of Sasol and the vision of Sasol is actually related to the vision of the metaverse. So from that point of view, I would like to share my thoughts and our thoughts on the metaverse. We have a lot of technologies available. And one, BCI graphics, AI are actually garnering a lot of attention from the globe. And many people are paying greater attention to the chat GPT. And BCI is really important to agenda. Of course, there are new areas such as robotics. However, it is kind of have it is having a little bit different nature. So, 
Centering around these technologies, let me start my presentations. As Lee jong mentioned, but I would like to mention this once again. Uh, if you run the nodes of the SaaS, you can get the resource. We name it as a resource because there is a SaaS blockchain mainnet, and within the mainnet, there are resources to use. So that is the reason why we name it as a resources. And if we ha use the smart contract so-called refine, you can get SIL. And many people keep saying and referring as a coin. However, we never say it as a coin. We always say, so we, don't, we never say coin. Many people call it as a coin. Well, there is no way for us to prevent calling it as a coin, but when we started this development of new technology, we didn't start our business to develop a coin. We had a very large dream and goal. So SASA is more like a contributions. So when I say contributions, you might wonder what it is. It is a contribution to maintaining maintaining the blockchain technologies. So SASA, I hope you can understand it as a way to have the humanity archives, the distributions or distributed computing as well our CEO mentioned. But SASA, you can think of it as a more like a database. It is more like a way to put the data into the blockchain. So you can think of it as archives. Why do I call it as a humanity archives? Let me briefly talk about that later. You can put pretty much anything in the block. Well, NFT garnered a lot of attention in the it is hot topic across the globe, starting from last year. However, NFT was actually a little bit distorted. And some people said that you have to have at least a few billions to purchase it, and you can have some kind of crime. You can think of some kind of crimes related to NFT, and some people use it for the bad purposes as well. However, from our perspective, NFT is a way to store the data in the blockchain. It is one of the ways to do so, actually. So we save pretty much every original data in the block, and it contains a name tag who started and who stored this data. So you can think of it as a way to store the data in the block. So we issued this NFTs this year, and many people ask us a question about the benefit of the NFT we issued. That if we purchase this NFT, what is the benefit they can have? This is by this question rising from the distorted understanding on the NFT. Well, it is just a simply data. It is like a way to store a file, including 3D fi file in block. It is a way to archive. So. So many people may wonder why we started this business developing so. Well, unfortunately, computer only knows zero and one. These are the only values they understand. So those do not trust the external data. Based on their internal data, they can compute. That is what we call as a blockchain technology. So it is very difficult and it is not dependent on the external data such as what, one or dollar. So we come up with this um, new contributor. So, and then I mentioned about data database. And you already know that there are a lot of efficient, fast, and popular databases. And you might wonder why you find it very inconvenient and slow to use it. So in order to answer this question, I have to explain and describe the development of our technologies. First of all, artificial intelligence. Do you know what it is? So I actually use a lot of applications. And actually, the application with AI asks uh, me a question and says hello and the pictures can be created 
Of course, these images can be created. If you click one button, you can click tens of the images just like this, and you can write up a novel. Of course, the efficiency of the ChatGP it is very convenient. Then what is the benefit and implication of the AI development? It undermines and it decreases the human productivity, no matter how hard we work. It is very difficult to defeat AI. It means that relative productivity of humans are decreasing. So if a com company creates something, it necessarily requires labor and the resources. However, it is now becoming more convenient for the companies to use this technology to produce a product. Of course, um, I think my, our professors are going to hate it, but when I went back to university and I and if I could use the chat GPT to do my homework or to prepare my thesis, well, I, I'm going to use it for sure because it is going to be super computer and super convenient and I'm going to ponder how I can more efficiently use chat GPT in order to um, do some projects. And there are the virtual worlds. And of course, there should be some existence that should be dealing with the repetitive work. And we call it as an NPC in the gaming industry. And we call it as an existence in the virtual world. The ones this technology is keeps developing it can be used in the virtual world. Then what is VCI? I believe that some of you may not be familiar with this. The Apple Vision Pro shows a part of the brain computer interface technology. Before, when we see the display, like for example, cell phones, kiosks, computer screens, we had to use a keyboard and a mouse in order to interact. However, for now, we don't have to do it. There is something in the display in the air. So, PCI kind of connects your brain to the computer. And it looks a little bit weird. You have to wear, wear something in order to interact with the computer through a BCI. However, in the near future, I believe that this device is going to be more developed and in the size of it is going to be so smaller. And as this technology continuously develops, it is going to continue interact and connect the humans to the computing technology. So BCI is going to connect the virtual world to the people. Then, graphic technology, so when it is being used, it is creating basically the backgrounds for the virtual world. It is very difficult to distinguish which one is real and which one is virtual. If you use the BCI to technology to go into the virtual world with this unreal graphics, it is going to be so surprising. So if you ask me what metaverse is, I can say and show you these presentations. It is a combination of these new technolo these technologies. And the current status of the metaverse is more like um, practice stages, like having a small offices in the virtual world, a small characters. It's more like exercises. Or the ultimate directions, the ultimate goal of this metaverse is the combinations of this new technology. And then here, the role of the Cecil is going to be the humanity archives. It is going to be the database for this metaverse and for the virtual world. And the chat GPT learns only a small amount of the data because it does not have a storage. It requires a lot of computing resources and it requires a lot of storages. However, this is there is no single computer that can support them. However, Sasal database it is going to archive and store the metaverse data. So that is the ultimate vision that we are aiming for. Then, well, it doesn't necessarily have to be Sasal maybe because the hardware is going to continue to develop. And if a specific company can implement all of the technologies that are required that I just mentioned. However, Sasal is the only option for us. 
The, you have to focus on the world that the, the virtual world is creating. Oh, yeah, for in the virtual world, the time refers to accumulation of the data. And accumulation of the data creates a time in the virtual world. It is unlike the real world that we are living in. Then here, blockchain technology is going to be responsible for the irreversible time access in this virtual world. So let's say that I went to the virtual world and uh, worked, and there was an issue, and I just went back. Who is going to face this as a real? Let's say that I implemented all of that I built a house in the virtual world, and some company just disappeared and went bankrupt, and it is everything is gone. Then who is going to trust this metaverse? Well, Sasal and Sal are going to be the database for this virtual world to record the people's activities in the virtual world. And it's going to be the time access that is irreversible. We are now living in the third industrial revolution. So of course, we keep talking about the fourth industrial revolution, but we, I believe that we are still in the third industrial revolution. And we always talk about the data stations. Data is really key in this revolution. It is very difficult to live a life without using internet. If we don't know a something, who is going to run towards the library? No one. They are going to open the internet app and Google it. Of course, they can use the paper, paper, paper book, however, most of them use the online services instead. The important part here is that everything we see online is consisting of the data. However, we haven't really thought that deeply about the data. Well, let's talk about the privacy. We know what privacy is. However, we don't really know how our data, how our privacy are being threatened, or how my data is being used in other in other areas or for other purposes. So it is very difficult for us to catch and grasp that. Um, so we can create everything fake. I know this is not good, not good news. However, let's say if a policy does some investigations and there is some things that they need to investigate and, you know, they can be fact. Of course, that's not always true. However, some journalist wrote articles uploaded without checking the truth. When we Google, there is something listed on the first page. However, some of the information are not right. What about the social networking services? They can fake it, and they can create faking data or videos and upload it to social networking services, including YouTube. They have the higher views. They can get some rewards. So that is the reason why there are so many fake contents online. The main reason behind this is that we are not paying great attention to how to manage this data. So what do we call it as a, as, what do we call it? We are living in the era of the platform economy. And in this platform economy, the size or the quantity of the data is really important. How many people are, are using this data? While data, nobody really cares about the data quality. They only pay attention to the data quantity. And that kind of determines the success in this era. And so that is the reason why we have so many, so many, so much fake data floating around in the online. So I believe that we have to shift from the platform to the protocol when it comes to the ecosystems. When I say protocol ecosystems, AI, BCI have this common characteristics that 
the quality is really important. So management of the quality is what we have to think about. The blockchain uses this protocol to manage this data. Of course, protocol can be defined as a smart contract. And as, as I told you before, NFT is a smart contract. And of course, on the Sasa, you can save URL and you can save it in the original data. And actually, there are so many protocols that you can apply to. But depending on these protocols, you can have a lot of commercialization areas. So having a lot of data does not guarantee the meaningful outcomes. We often say the mean fourth industrial revolutions. First, industrial revolution is referring to a revolution in the angry culture society. So the resource at that time was up, was land. And then this revolution it stresses the importance of the resources, such as labor. And in the third industrial revolution, the data is really key. However, I believe, I want to rephrase it as the quantity of the data. And now I believe that the key word for the fourth industrial revolution is the quality of the data. In order to secure the high quality data, many industries and many companies will evolve. And it's going to alter and transform our economic activities. So that is the reason why we call it as a revolution. AI, BCI, drone technologies. Of course, that these are new technologies, but we don't call them. We don't call it as the fourth industrial revolutions. These technologies all combined will transform our daily lives. So some people even ask, what AI or the blockchain? And if you say it's a clone, if you ask a question about AI, Oh, well, it is a way to play Pato or game Go. Well, why you have to think about why blockchain technology is going to be the new important pillar supporting for this revolution. And once this virtual world, the metaverse is realized, I believe that our technology is going to be the time axis. That is the aiming that we are having. A coin, you can call it as a coin, Sasal, everything is fine. However, our friends and the Sasal and all the developers are developing technology. You can use this technology, you can use this technology to have your business. However, I like to ask you not to ask me about the possible business. However, we are open to provide any answers related to our technology until we achieve our goal. We are not going to stop. And the blockchain, Sasal, well, is a big trend that cannot be stopped. If not, if when we all disappear, Sasal is not going to be stopped. Once someone is running their nodes, nobody can stop it. Each one has their own role. And we are just devoting ourselves to make it more affordable and efficient. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was a uh, speech from the Vice President Yi Jae-in, the AI BCI blockchain. Uh, their development will be finally uh, combined into Metaverse. The Metaverse will be the basis for the new business to be coming up. And your insight was very refreshing for us. Thank you very much. We're going to have a quick announcement. All the audiences here in the auditorium, please put your cell phone in uh, to a vibration or uh, vibration mode or matter mode so that no sound is coming off from your cell phone. Thank you very much for your understanding. We're going to have a, a panel discussion that is called the Sasol Summit Forum to talk about uh, the issues with the uh, CEO Baek Seung Wang from Blockwise Ratings and the uh, CEO Seo Bom from RJ Crypto and also Blockchainer Jong Hyun from China 
CNBC to talk about, as a panelist, uh, the main issues of Bitcoin, to talk about the, all the processes of the invention and the development of, of the Bitcoin, to talk about how it will be developed in the future. We are going to have uh, two different topics in the discussion. First is the future forecast about the crypto. So our panelists will talk about, based on looking back on the Bitcoin's invention and development, how the crypto business will have it to uh, in the future. And second topic would be the new opportunity of the crypto business. And FD, DeFi, and SDO, what are the process that we have been to, and how in the future we are going to have in the blockchain market, and what kind of new opportunity we can a hold in the future. And please give a big round of applause for the panelists of the forum. For today's discussion, we are going to have CEO Baxin Guang as a moderator. Please give him a big round of applause. Good morning. I am the moderator of today's top today's discussion, Baxin Guang. Maybe sometime last month was a 10 years anniversary of creation of the Bitcoin. The crypto has shown us different innovations and, and the changes. And through uh, this discussion, we will look back on the history of past 15 years, and based on which we are going to talk about our future. And now, let me briefly introduce our panelists. So first, I am the digital investor, uh, Blockwise CEO, Park Seung Gwang. And currently, the adjunct professor of Hanyang University, we have the Professor Bae yun and the head of the Korea Division, and also the, uh, the VC, Jung Yeewon, as a blockchainer from China. And Park TV Crypto Panel, and also CEO of the LJO, LJ Crypto, Mr. Sa Bong Seok, is here with us. And now we are going to go into the discussion, but before that, it's been 15 years since the Bitcoin was first invented. How do you think about uh, the future of the uh, blockchain? So by briefly introducing yourself, please give us your opinion. We'll go to the uh, Professor Bei Yun Chen first. Nice to meet you. As introduced, I am the Hanyang University adjunct professor and also the blockchain strategic research. As a consulting uh, agent, I am uh, Be Professor Bei Yun Chen. And for Web 3.0, I am also operating uh, the, the channel, blogwise um, channel, uh, to show more information. So blockchain and crypto are cannot be alienated with one another. So one thing that we have to point out is that crypto or cryptocurrency is the starting and the consisting of the blockchain, that is the basic resource. For anybody who are participating in the ecosystem, this is the element of the reward for their joining in the blockchain. So we are looking back the 15 years of the history of blockchain, the 15 years, so since 2009, about seven years, sometime around 2015. So from then, so we have the bull market for about five years. And after the COVID-19, so from 2020, 2023, looking back the three years, so during that time, the crypto market, especially the blockchain market, we have been evolved and developed and improved and expanded. So from the past, present, we can think about the future and how the blockchain business 
business and industry will be evolved and developed, and how will crypto uh, evolve? We think that they can grow further together with the uh, evolution and development of the crypto market and the blockchain market. So we will talk about it in detail in the latter part of the discussion. And third, the growth and the development of the blockchain, maybe the government of each of the nation, they try to absorb the blockchain in the conventional industry, try to apply or adopt a blockchain in their existing traditional system. So that means they are going in the track of the normal uh, system that we have had so far, but before the COVID-19. The traditional market and the crypto market, they were decoupled. So they went to their own ways. But after the COVID-19, the market, we have the expansion of the market with a lot of capital coming in. So existing the uh, legal, uh, legal currency, in order uh, to put them on track, uh, there were many things that have been uh, done in the blockchain or crypto. So they're more like in the same field. The conventional currency, if they are in the dip, then the crypto market is also in the dip. And if it is bull, and the crypto market will also experience a bull market. That means the, the spot ETF, if it is approved or not, it is a key issue of the conventional market. If it is approved as a spot ETF, then the demand for the Bitcoin will be explosively increased. Then the value and the uh, their currency will go increase in price. So we have to uh, keen, uh, keep our eye on this and how it will be unfolded in the future for the perspective, for the purpose of the development of the business and also have to look out to the opportunity. Thank you. So you see it as a very positive future for the cryptocurrency industry that's good um can we have a tongue one and he's chinese she's chinese but she can speak a little bit korean so i would like to ask for your understanding so can you share your opinions about the future i am chung ye on and i am the ceo of the crypto korea this is the vc well, last week celebrated at the 15th anniversary of the inception of Bitcoins for the past 15 years. There are so many financial products, innovations took place. Well, this is the only financial product that has been on the rise for the past 15 years. And Bitcoin is only one financial product that has been on the rise for the past 15 years. So the value of it, you can think it as a digitalized gold. The, agreement with the ACC is garnering a lot of attention from the globe. And there was a fine. So I think it is going to be more convenient for the users to centralize exchange. However, our data is going to can be viewed by from the, gov the U.S. government. Well, if you want to play with the markets, will be threatened and they are not going to play in the market anymore. But on the other hand, the private is going to be more important than might be the opinion of the individuals and the companies. And maybe they need to move their assets around. So most of the important part in the market is the financial industry, which is accounting for 80%. However, the, their share is going to be decreasing to the 50%. And the decentralization is going to be more vitalized. And the examinations for the listing will be more strengthened. 
that were more tight than if it was. I think they will be more conservative, and the operation will be more conservative as well. So from the overall perspective on the future of the Bitcoins, of course, there will be a lot of regulations. However, it has a great potential. So a positive feedbacks regarding that. So we'll go to the CEO, Seo Bomsok. Hi, I am the CEO of RJ Crypto, Seo Bomso. We are NFT-based accommodation uh, company and have been the panelists of the Fox Economic TV to talk about the crypto and the blockchain. The forecast about the cryptocurrency market, I think it has a bright future. But the question is when? So from the perspective of the investment, in order for the development of the cryptocurrency market, investment should be more supported. So we are at a critical juncture now meeting the 2024. In a macroeconomic perspective, the Fed is whether keep increasing its interest or we will lower the interest rate. That is a key point. And second, from the perspective of the cryptocurrency market, the Bitcoin and the spot ETF would be the key issue, whether it is approved or not, and when it will be approved, that is the key issue. So more or less, people see uh, the spot ETFs or ETF would be approved, but next year we will also have another half-life. There are many controversies about the half-life. Half-life, we have expected the half-life already so will it make another increase of a half of price because of the half life but if you look at the history every time we have half life the price of the bitcoin increase so spot ep etf half life and this will be something that will make the dip or the bull of the Bitcoin market or crypto market in 2024. But the bottom line, it will have a bright future. That's all. Thank you. So it was like a neutral position that they like, Well, it was not really neutral. I'm too optimistic for the future. However, it's a matter of the timings. So whether it's going to be a matter of whether it's going to be explosive or not, I think it is very up to, I'm really optimistic about the future of the cryptocurrency. So let's talk about the investment, investment in Bitcoins. Well, some of you have already shared your opinions regarding this, how, but how do you view the investment in Bitcoins? Can we start with Chang Ye Won? In the cryptocurrency, I have been working for seven years. And many people and many friends ask me about the investment of Bitcoins. And my answer is always the same. You have to consider you are financial status and you the way of managing risk. If you're okay that this money is gone, gone, you can invest regularly, just like a regular savings. It is it is okay to purchase or mine the bitcoins, and you have to forget about it. And once they are accumulated, you can you know exchange it. And I believe the values of bitcoin will be larger. Yes, so that is the, uh, the always people say that. So little by little, every month, regularly save the money. So CEO Sabam Sak, how do you think about investing in Bitcoin? You already talked about it already, right? So I just gave you the general view about the Bitcoin. Not Bitcoin, but just cryptocurrency. Uh, but here, Bitcoin, so not altcoin, but Bitcoin is the only future that we have. That's not my perspective. But we already know the Bitcoin dominance, about 45 to 50 percent of all the, um, the capital, the cap of the, uh, the coin ta uh, is taken up by the Bitcoin. So it has its disadvantages. Yes, we have many alternatives. But even so, for the purpose of the investment, we have to have certain amount of Bitcoin for investment. There are many other good uh, mentioning about it. So out of the, um, the your asset, what percentage you have to have Bitcoin, but 
the proportion of the Bitcoin should be uh, larger, not lower or larger. Uh, So how much? So in a lump sum, in a in a in a uh, rule of thumb, so we always the, let's go to the amount that Upbit has. So just out of all the cryptocurrency, you have to have about 40 to 50 percent of your asset to be proportion to uh, the to to be the proportion of the Bitcoin. So that is a good advice, I think. How about you, uh, Professor Bae Yun-chol? Well, now I have to talk about the investment in Bitcoins. Well, another word is investment in cryptocurrency, then it is a matter of how you are going to make your decisions. The cryptocurrency is creating new opportunities for us, and that is the reason why we have to key, pay attention to it. And Bitcoin is uh, accounting for the largest part of it. And the investment is actually based on the principle of the demand and the supply. So the supply of the Bitcoin is infinite and we are facing half-life next year. So we have to think about the demand. So we have to think about and expect the demand if we it's going to be really depending on the size of the demand. If, if there is no demand, the price is going to be lower, of course. Then what do you think about the traditional market and how we are going to view and how they are going to adopt this cryptocurrency? They are actually evaluating, they are actually investigating. Well, actually, you have to purchase something, so there is going to be the demand. So it is very likely to have higher demands. And for the few countries, El Salvador and Central Africa, well, actually, they see this um, currency as uh, their central currency. So they have to have some level of the reserves in order to make the smooth operations. So the many forms of utilizing utilization of cryptocurrency is being view, viewed and investigated by other countries. So having continuous attention to this, cryptocurrency is very essential and key when it comes to investment. And it's actually similar to how you invest in the traditional financial market. If you are conservative, there is a Bitcoin and Ethereum and there's are coins. For the conservative investor, 52322, that is a portion that I want to recommend for the portfolio. Or if you are more aggressive, 334. So that is the portion that I would like to recommend reflecting the overall um, cryptocurrency market. So it is very difficult to say and stress the importance of the investment in Bitcoins. You just have to consider the other types of cryptocurrencies as well. Up to now, it, before establishing a certain level of the ecosystem, you need to take time to verify altcoins. While you have to maintain uh, and you have to change the art coins for every three to six months because there are many marketing and there are many promotions to boost the prices for some art coins. However, reaching at some point, it, it, it is quite clear whether it can be maintained or it will not be. So, and the whole cycle is being becoming more quickly, faster and faster. So, if you are investing in art coins, I think you have to check every three to six months and you and if there is a profit, you can alter and switch it to another art coins. I think that is a portfolio strategy that you can aim for. And as I said before, you really need to have a certain level of access to invest. You don't have to lend something in order to invest in the coins. You have to have a long-term strategy in addition to it. I think that's the strategy that the many people are employing. Thank you. So this is more like a textbook. So it's easier said than done. So because I'm working in the uh, in the school, that's why I talk like a textbook. So third question is that after the invention of the Bitcoin, there have been many different keywords: ICO, NFT, and uh, uh, DeFi, and other, and Web 3.0. What kind of new keyword get uh, taken into a term this year. So what is the next generation hot keyword 
you are expecting for next year. So from CEO s a b a m s a first. So this year, there was no keyword whatsoever because it was a tough year. So we have Luna Terra, right? So it's really tough year, uh, too tough to create new keywords. So the coin investment and those who uh, I believe that you, are, you have high interest in um, coin investment. So NFT, DeFi, or Web 3.0. The one biggest issue is that when the price is going up, the, it's all due to the pro, uh, project marketing and also the community's movement to expect an uh, increase in the price. So even if there's a substantial value, the price was increased. But after it is increased, when we look at the reality, we have a cold question that whether it can be really used in real world, we will call it utility, how it is connected to uh, the real asset. So there were uh, not Not many coins that have the substantial value or existence. So here, RWA is something that is re-emerged, real-world asset. It is short for real-world asset. So the fungible or infungible assets, how we can make it as a token or how we can tokenize it in the virtual market, that would be a new key word. So there's a token uh, se uh, security uh, manual. So we have the SDO. So we are expecting it to be institutionalized, ne institutionalized next year. So in the world, so RWA uh, market in RWC, Boston Consulting Group, expect it to be by 2030, uh, it will be increased to be about uh, 1.5 trillion dollars. So maybe next year, RWA or uh, SDO. Maybe in a comprehensive way, we will call RWA as a huge next uh, ta a big keyword. So that can be a huge keyword next year, I'm expecting. Thanks for your opinion, RWA. It's quite a similar concept to our STO, right? You can think it as the RW includes the concept of the STO. So what do you think about this, Professor Bae yoon Well, we always want to think of some new keywords for the next year, to reaching towards the end of the year. Well, celebrating the 15th anniversary of the blockchain, we have divided them into the 7th and 10th and 13th years. If you Google it, Siri is answering my questions. I'm sorry about that. So the keywords for the 2023, you can find them on the Google. And there are about 10 to 15 keywords. And there, some of them are duplicate. From my perspective, I can think of five keywords. First, Web3, DAO, Play UA, instead of P2E. We can have X21 instead of P2E, NF NFT, STO, which is, being, which is uh, under the institutionalization effort. And among these five keywords that I just mentioned, and Web3 is the most important. And this Wednesday, Jung Pan Zhao from finance will pay the 5.5 trillion and is going to resign. And that is going to be the biggest news in this industry. And the literature tongue is going to be the next leader and the governor. And he mentioned about three. One, trust with the consumers. Second, maintaining a relationship with the regulators. And third is really important. It's about business. He is going to cooperate with the partners to stabilize Web3 and he's going to put an effort to stabilize and develop it further. So he pointed and chose this keyword Web3. 
So the most inflation figure in this industry mentioned is Web3. You can think it as a very important keyword, and I agree with that. So the whole world moving based on the Web3.0. Well, we have been evolving from Web 1.0 to 2.0, and we are heading to 3.0. And in the Web 3.0 market, is related to blockchain because the user's activity can be backed by the ownership in the Web 3.0 in order to give the ownership. Blockchain technology should be utilized. So with this blockchain technology and the crypto will be the efficient and effective form to provide the ownership that is already evident from the NFT market. So providing the ownership and the mega trend for providing the ownership, well, it's going to be based on the Web 3.0. Well, there will be new technology, new keywords for the next year. However, now for now, we have to take a careful attention to the Web 3.0. Thank you very much. So next, about, about you, Jung Ye-won, because you're staying much of your time in overseas. So what is your hot keyword? There are so many hot keywords, I think. And just uh, three out of those would be this year, BRC 2.0. Oh, would be. So Bitcoin based rail two is, I think, the the scale where the amount had been increased this year, and the second, the combination of the AI and Bitcoin and how we can do it. One fun fact here is that until last year. Blockchain and Web 3.0, there were many conferences held by that, but because of the regulations and the bear market that we are experiencing this year, many of the conferences switching their uh, topic from Web 3.0 to AI and tech. So the business direction for mainnet is also going to the way how it can be combined with AI or ChatGPT, with the advent of the ChatGPT. So how we can uh, combine those two technology to finally have the commercialization of any technology that we can invent. So third is the sustainable development possibility. For example, the photovoltaic, so the mining, the so mining of the Bitcoin, any companies who are focusing on mining of the Bitcoin, because of their utility bill, the electricity, they are suffering very much. So in the news in September, they cannot even uh, give the payment to the workers. And POS or POW in the middle, maybe we have to meet in the halfway between the two to strike a balance. That is the key. The last but not least, so I have done the cross-chain business before, which was very difficult. Of course, the main nets that we are having, the lay two products, they are explosively increasing and coming in the market. Uh, and will have more influence in the market. But still, the cross-chain, we do not have any product that, can, that we can easily use. I hope more top engineers will come into this business. So if the the uh, the users, maybe general user, can easily use the cross-chain product in the future. That I'm hoping. Now I would like to move on to the next question. This can be a little bit aggressive. Some people questions about the future values or the value of investment of art coins, except Bitcoins, and it's going to be lower. 
And it's, some people say that everything is going to be disappeared except Ethereum and Bitcoins. So what do you think about the future of these coins? So I'm going to ask this question. Well, CEO Sabamza, what do you think about the future of our coins? You, I can have a very clear idea. Peter Kyun, Ethereum, and our coins. Well, some even say that everything is going to be disappeared and gone except Ethereum Bitcoins. I think it is too too much, I think. However, most of the 99% of the coins that are currently available will be disappeared. The well, 95% of the startups are disappeared in the middle of the way to commercialization. It is the same for the coin industry, and there are some um, crimes related to this, and there, are, there, might, there may be some accessible coins, but it is very difficult to admit that it is all fake. It is not really always a fake, of course. There are many wonderful good projects, and the firm of Facebook, uh, engineers uh, created a new and started a new business on um, Optopus. So I've been, and I'm expecting so many new services. So I can say that um, this negative sentiment for the future of the art coins is 50% right, 50% wrong. So after three to five years, the future of the art coins. Well, I when I operate and run the community for the coins. Well, we have to stay together until we can use this Bitcoin to purchase coffee from the Starbucks. Of course, there are many dif difficulties and issues to do so, and there are many solutions. And when you think of Naver or the Kakao, they have pay. So I'm not so sure which project is going to be. However, at some point, we can use the crypto pay. It, it was Perry, I'm not so sure. It was Tesla, I'm not so sure. So it was a very event-specific way to use the cryptocurrency. However, I believe that there will be a point and that the cryptocurrency can be used as a, pay, a way to pay, just like a neighbor pay or the cacao pay. So maybe am I <laughs> off the topic, but yeah. Then can I ask another, uh, to another panelist? For me, I'm the opposite to your opinion. So up until now, so compared to Web 2.0, Web 3.0, we do not have professional technical engineers or developers yet. So as time goes by, as more attention is coming in, in this Web 3.0, we'll have more skilled engineer coming to this Web 3.0. So Ray 1, Ray 2, or other um, products. I'm only expecting more, uh, more uh, sub or byproduct uh, to be invented. Recently, the Rail 2, the Blast, uh, based on the Ethereum 2.0, I think it already have uh, hosted $3 billion, so it would amount to about 400 billion won in Korean won. So this uh, was something that we discussed in the Twitter space. Twitter space, we always talk about these kind of things. And simply put, this blast is those who are coming in this community, they have to be invited by, um, by someone who are in the community. And there's nothing open until February next year. And I also uh, invest a little in this blessed uh, community. And here, it's more like a scam. But such kind of configuration can be seen as a good starting point because this is a bear market. So in the future, if this kind of platform or this kind of team can be increased, it'll be good. That's my expectation. So, 5, 2, 3, 2, 3. So this is the portfolio share that you just mentioned, Mr. Bay. And 
So what do you think about that? Well, actually, um, I think it is opportunity to talk generally about the Cohen's. The 50% of the Cohen's, well, actually, I mentioned about changing strategy every three to six months for the art coins. So let me talk about a little bit Ethereum. So most of the coins are the Ethereum based and some of them use Polygon and for the NFT ER, it is based on the ERC so it is basically based on the Ethereum and there are new forms of the cryptocurrency projects so, it, so many technologies are dependent on the Ethereum technologies so we, that's the reason why we are confident to say something about the Bitcoin or Ethereum. The investment in art coins, of course, there is a new opportunity. And as the CEO Sapam Sang mentioned, most of the art coins currently available are not really sustainable. That I mentioned about the DAO. The decentralization for the blockchain projects is really depending on the level of the decentralization. If that's not implemented, some centralized um, institution, some centralized server is going to uh, control. So we, it is very important to say that we are shifting to the decentralization and that is really important to consider when it comes to investment. Well, actually, when if you purchase stocks, so you already, you always target the fields or the industry that you are, you have a knowledge in. However, for the art coins, if you and start purchasing or minting or investing in from the very early stage, it is very difficult to have a always a very very few, you can always ha expect a brighter futures. But we are approaching to the market that you can have a mid to long term investment in this cryptocurrency. So you have, I think you can select a good project if you control your greed, if you will. So, but of course you can start investing in from very early stage. And if you may, if, and also you can start investing in the middle of it. Well, because you want to earn a lot, you can to have a higher profit. That is the reason why you're jumping in and investing in this art coins just like me, right? But I can definitely say that new opportunities are being created and they are approaching to us. However, by having this opportunity, you have to define your direction, strategies or orientations for your investment. Um, the future world is going to value more about the digital assets rather than the wealth that we are currently referring to, such as houses or the buildings. So we have a new opportunity to be rich in with the digital assets. So you have to study harder and you have to have your clear investment strategy. Thank you. Yes, so it was another textbook message, right? Sorry for being a textbook. So this year we used to call it as the crypto winter. So the Luna Terra incident in the early of uh, time of the year and the mainnet or Korean companies, not only in Korea, but also in the global arena. So the mainnet, Korean mainnet company was seen a little uh, negatively. So many people suffer from that, not only those uh, developers, but also investors. So, but even so, we have this huge conference. So this KE uh, and the Sasol blockchain 
organizer and those participants, I really am rooting for you, as you're well aware. So there are not many companies in Korea promoting the uh, mainnet technology, but even so, the SASO, I have been watching SASO for a long time, and I really want to support you with all my heart because this is kind of a really uh, big hope of Korean mainnet technology development. So one last comment. Many uh, investors left the market. Also, many people in the business, they are leaving the market. So are you? can you wrap up by giving your last comment from uh, CEO Jung Yeon first? So we always talk about bull market, bull market, or bear market. But my personal opinion is that from now on, we will not have the same year just that we have experienced uh, for the past 15 years. So we will have short bull market and long bear market. That kind of cycle, we can go in the in the reverse pattern, maybe in the future, especially for investment. Maybe those who are doing the short, we have to learn a lot from them. And those, rather than accepting or listening to the suggestion of the people around you, you have to follow your own value, your own standard, your own belief. Don't be impulsed by uh, the, uh, the saying about other people, saying it's bull market or bear market. It's, uh, it has to be started from you. Well, I can be a little bit more aggressive this time. I will tell you how to earn the profits in the short market. So you can select the 100 coins, and you can invest in 100 million. And one of them, if one of them succeeds, and it's going to be super successful. However, if you have a two coins successful, I think you're going to be super rich. However, the most important part here is that many people cannot wait until this reaches, and then the value of it reaches 100 times greater. So. You have to think about how impatient you can be until the value of the specific coin can reach a value that is a hundred times greater. So you have to think about that. That is the reason that by doing so, you can earn the profits in the short market. Yes, thank you. So, Professor Pei, the contribution to uh, the cryptocurrency market. There are three things. First, the blockchain, when you look at the activity in blockchain, those who freely go into the blockchain market and do contribution, that is a way that you can drive the blockchain technology to uh, prosper. So you have to think about that. Those who are in this business or in this technology, how many people will be in? That is one factor. If you are just a, a soft investor, you have to think whether are there many people who are in this blockchain or not. So how the community is established, that is the first thing that you have to think about as a factor, whether you will make a decision to invest or not. Second, from December last year, the uh, the Gen AI of ChatGPT was something that have uh, gained all the uh, attention. The Sam Hartnam was fired and then came back to Google, and that situation happened very quickly. The AI is absorbing and uh, digesting data, and blockchain is creating data. So if it is not a uh, fraud or this is uh, validated data and if it can be uh, fed to the AI, that kind of combination will happen next year and that will be a huge opportunity if you look at this. And third, it's really directly in the, related with the asset, that is a tokenization. So this 
February, we have the manual for the STO. So next year, we will um, sincerely open uh, the market of STO. Those asset that was hard enough to be tokenized or to be capitalized, the NFT was something that was invented in the past to do that in some level, but STO is now uh, institutionalized, and RWA really was mentioned by other panelists. So we will have uh, the tokenization of this kind of assets in earnest from next year. So whether it is physical or uh, digital assets, if we can make those as the uh, volatile um, asset, if you look at that opportunity, that will be a huge one next year. Thank you for the wonderful remarks and opinions. And many people, all the investors who have a great interest in the cryptocurrency are here today. And I would like to say thank you all. And I can see that you're passionate about this cryptocurrency. And actually, the cryptocurrency boom was like 60 to 70 percent contributable to the Korean market. So, and I can see that many people are still enthusiastic and passionate about this industry. And let me conclude the panel discussion here. Thank you very much. Give a big round of applause one more time to all the panelists and moderator. Thank you very much for all the panelists and moder moder uh, moderator to give an insight about the changes the future of blockchain, the, the blockchain uh, evolution and the advancement of the technology in the ecosystem. We have uh, many insights about uh, the elements and factors inside. Thank you very much for your discussion. And here, the expectation for Sasol that I can fill in the, uh, the field, I hope this can be shifted into the new future of the blockchain. This will bring up to the end of the morning session, give you a quick announcement. You can enjoy your lunch time. Uh, in the restaurant located in the uh, basement floor. We are going to have our afternoon session starting from 13.10. From 13.10, we are going to have the first prize drawing for the smooth operation. We are going to advance the time to 13.10, about 10 minutes. We are going to have our uh, time started from 13.10. We have full of prizes. We are going to have uh, about 500,000 won worth of gift card and the goods to uh, the first uh, prize winner. And for the second uh, prize, we are going to have about 50,000 won worth of Starbucks gift card and also other goods of the Seoul Labs. And the prize will be rewarded by, awarded by uh, the um, the Sasil uh, technology uh, com uh, staff. And for your reference, those clothes uh, goods developed and manufactured by Seoul Labs are now uh, being uh, sold in the store, in the lobby, on the left side of the lobby, in the exit area. You can buy those goods freely. Our um, after the session will be started from 13.30 after the prize drawing to have our uh, presentation started from CEO Chang Do Hee to talk about his ecosystem and the wallet and the game to talk about the uh, opportunity and the uh, possibility of the commercialization of Sasol blockchain. Please do not miss all these great presentations. We do have many participants. Uh, there may be some congestions in your coming and going in the venue. Please um, please be organized so that we can have a smooth operation. Please keep all your belongings with you so that nothing will be lost. In the afternoon session, your sitting will be uh, in an orderly fashion. So please be careful and enjoy your lunch time. I will meet you again in the afternoon session. Thank you very much.
네, 점심 맛있게 드셨나요? I hope you enjoy the lunch. I hope you enjoy the lunch. Now we will begin with the gift lottery. As you can see from the screen, we have prize drawings. We are going to provide the 500,000 신사기 gift card and Seoul Labs T-shirts. And the 10 second winners will receive 50,000 Starbucks gift and T-shirts of the Seoul Labs. And because of the time constraint, I will start the prize drawing as announced. Please check your number under the seat and we are going to call it the number for the prize winners. There is a number assigned to each seat. So for the distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, please check your number and assign each seat. Now, I would like to pick 10 numbers and then I would like to introduce who is going to give the rewards. Now, I would like to introduce three distinguished guest who is going to help me with the re giving out the drawing, uh, giving out the prizes. And first of all, I would like to introduce them. Ma sang -yong from the TV Tech, Choi mi -so Global Marketing Director, and the Choi hyun -jong Director. So, I will start with the second round. I will call out each number so each winner can come up to the stage to get the reward. Choi Mi-seo Global Marketing Director, Choi hyun Jung, is the director. Please, can you come up to the stage to help me with this prize drawing? TV Tech Choi Mi Seo Global Marketing Director and the Choi Hyun Jung Business Planning Director will help me with this prize drawing. Now I would like to say K37. K37. So if there is no one with the number K37, I will call the next one F38. F38, F38, second row 26, second row 26, A54, A54, J46, J46, N53, 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 M55, M55, I call out the six numbers and I will additionally call out four numbers. A56, A56, A56,
Congratulate you for those of you who won the second prize. Now I'm going to move on to the first prize. And the sponsor of today's conference, Ma Sang Yong, CEO of TV Tech, is going to help me with this prize drawing. Can I have him on the stage? So the first prize winner will be given with the $500,000 worth Shinsege gift and the t-shirts of Solex. It's E, elephant as E, E22. Congratulations, E as in elephant, E22, can you come up to the stage? And for the group photos, can I have Director Chen Mi So and the Director of the Business Planning to the stage as well? We are joined by many participants today, and she is the winner of the first prize. Congratulations! And now we will take a photo. Please smile towards the camera. Congratulations. Wrapping up the whole year, whole year, she is given with a wonderful gift. Congratulations one more time. Congratulations, CEO Ma Yang So, Ma Sang Yong, Director Choi Mi So, Director Choi Won Jo. I would like to thank you all as you guys are helping me with this prize drawing. Thank you very much. Please don't be disappointed if you're not the winner with the first round of the prize drawings. After the afternoon sessions, we are going to have the second sessions for the prize drawings. So, and the gift will be also great. 1.5 million worth robo wrap robot and the t-shirts will be given to the first winner and 500,000 worth of Hongsam gift set and the t-shirts of the celebs will be given to the second winners and as we are wrapping up this prize drawing so let us begin the se afternoon sessions 2023 Sasa Blockchain Conference is being held right now. Thank you very much for being here despite the cold weather. Thank you very much once again. Sasa Blockchain Conference 2023 is a venue that we can talk about the future direction and also redefine the Web 3.0 through the paradigm shift of the blockchain technology. And we are going to introduce the technology of the Hustle's engine and mainnet, which is emerging as a third generation blockchain, to talk about the assignment for future technical e evolution and also the future of the blockchain business. This event is being uh, provided uh, with the simultaneous interpretation and streaming online. With the beginning of the afternoon session, please welcome everyone with a big warm round of applause. I'm going to officially open the afternoon session of the Sasa Blockchain Conference 2023.
So, unlike any other conferences, we can feel the huge enthusiasm of the audience. Thank you very much for all the audience who are being here with us and also the online participants watching this in a streaming online service. So, we are going to start the afternoon session in earnest by a presentation uh, from the CEO of uh, Seoul Labs, Mr. Chang Do Hee. Seoul Labs is for the, um, the activation of the Tassel blockchain is working a lot to support technology and the technological development of the of the Tassel Dev service and also operating of the of community is try to vitalize the uh, technology of the Tassel blockchain. And CEO Zhang is going to talk about challenges and issues of Tassel blockchain ecosystem from the starting point of the uh, coming into the market. We are going to look into the challenges and also we are going to uh, have a sneak peek of the role of the uh, Seoul Labs as well. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. 그 갑자기 많이 추워졌어. Now the weather is very cold. I was worried in the morning because unlike yesterday it's very cold. And we actually rented this auditorium which can accommodate more than a thousand people. We thought that because of the cold weather we only have the 300 amount of people but now we are filled with all the audience in the seat. All the people coming from different regions in South Korea and also coming from overseas. Thank you very much for coming to this venue at home and from abroad. And from the academia or blockchain businesses, we have many CEOs and also many developers are here with us today. And those investors for the cloud mining and also from media, we have many participants. Thank you very much once again for your participation today. Yes. So Seoul Labs, from this September, uh, it was officially incorporated as an LTD. Just like Sasul, we are using the Korean as our term. The Seoul, the capital of Korea, is combined with Labs to make our brand name as Seoul Labs. It's only been three months, but all the staff, members of Seoul Labs startup, are all the representatives and experts in the business and industry, and pulled out our effort successfully to have this huge conference, which can accommodate more than a thousand people, because we are very skilled and experienced from marketing to business and to other areas. And we are expanding very rapidly. About 15 people are being recruited. So please feel free to introduce or refer anybody who are very skilled in the field or I welcome you guys as well to be part of our member and I'm going to talk about the vision and the strategy of Seoul Labs to venture out in this world the meta evolution Maybe some people would not be familiar with this uh, term of meta-revolution. So for the first time in the world, this, co this term was coined by us, the Seoul Labs. This is a new term coined. It means a digital technology combined with the uh, virtual reality to make a revolution. This term, metaverse, virtual reality, augmented reality, and the mixed reality, and other technological uh, terms are combined to have the real and the virtual world can be combined to have a new paradigm. 
we are just putting that old vision into one term of meta revolution. For the technical development and the improvement of the world, it is creating new worlds. This will have our livelihood, and uh, the society will have a huge and positive impact and bring about new vision in the future as a mainstream. Web 3.0. Maybe in media and in any other sources, you have heard of Web 3.0 very frequently, I believe. On the right side, for Web 3.0, it is signified by decentralization, user ownership, and interoperability. So among them, we actually are putting more emphasis on user ownership. So in Web 1.0, it was reading. And Web 2.0, it was reading and writing. And for Web 3.0, reading, writing, and most of all, the ownership is the new factor that was counted in. That means the private ownership together with the internet and the blockchain, the data ownership era is opened up. That is the gist of the Web 3.0. Web now, with blockchain for the past 15 years, there have been many different kinds of blockchain came into the market. And what kind of meaning does that uh, kind of advent have? The blockchain in our industry, in the society, it provides the meaning of the uh, security, decentralization, efficiency, and transparency, and many more. But for blockchain technology, not only at home, but also from abroad, in many different industries and business businesses, they try to apply blockchain. However, up until now, it is not fully materialized in the commercial, commercial arena yet. If that is the case, with the 15 years of history of blockchain, why is it still difficult for it to be applied to our livelihood in real life? That's because of the limitation of trilemma, technical limitations that we have, and it has not been overcome yet. So, and speed and the decentralization is the two sides of the coin. It is kind of a trait of relation. If you have to, you have to give up one side if you want to achieve the other side. That is a challenge that was not been achieved for the past 15 years. Many different businesses try to achieve it and still try to achieve it, but none has achieved this yet. So today, today is a day to introduce the Sasu blockchain, isn't it? In the morning, the keynote speech was given by the genius inventor Mr. Lee Jong-un and also the vice president Lee Jae-in from Artie Friends. For six years of work, they invented the Sasil, the new blockchain, May 17th, a year before. Looking back, this Sasil blockchain is a milestone when you think about the history of blockchain. It is a third generation which, has a, which holds a great meaning with the Sasa blockchain coming in the market, we are meeting a new transition in the blockchain paradigm. Back in 2009, we had first generation blockchain that was Bitcoin, introducing the new concept of decentralization. And back in 2015, we had Ethereum, invented by Vitalik Buterin, by adopting the new technology of smart contract to provide the opportunity of the scale, scalability in the blockchain technology. And last year, in May, the third generation blockchain Sasol had a complete decentralization with an unparalleled speed in the transaction to provide new paradigm in blockchain. 
Yes, it's true indeed. The only blockchain technology that overcame the trilemma of the blockchain to provide new technology for the first time in the world. Now, based on this Sasol blockchain, we will have a real and adaptable DEP will be applied and will be uh, coming in the market. So it's more uh, precise to say that we have the baseline technology ready to have the DEP to come into uh, the real life. So this will lead to the evolution of the technology, industry, and society. And the uh, Ethereum 2.0 technology will go into the Sasa blockchain, and the new product of DEP will will also be introduced in the market because of the uh, unparalleled speed and the low uh, fee for transaction and without bridge transaction. And in the block, we can upload some uh, files. That kind of technology will be supported in the Sasol blockchain. In the morning, Mr. Lee from Arctic Friends the uh, CEO Lee and the VP Lee also uh, put emphasis on this, the opening and the beginning of the universal computing. Universal computing is by using all different uh, laptops and computers in the world, we can connect them into the part of the, uh, the decentralized network. With this, many different uh, companies can continue their new businesses, which is very impressive and uh, very, uh, which makes my heart beat very fast. So now, with Sasol blockchain, there are many different services that, can, that we can meet in the real life. For example, uh, the digital identity validation, or anytime, anywhere, you can identify your own identity without any limitations. Then all the assets that you own, you can uh, transition of uh, them into digital assets. Also, we can do the distributed level of storage of files, and we can uh, make all different files into part of the business. And between platforms, there will be no uh, fragmentations or no separation. There will be connected and shared. And they can be used in uh, various ways. A more stable and credible smart e-voting can also be enabled. And also smart e-government can be provided very easily. This is, and this can be provided with App 3.0 and in blockchain. And in that line, so Labs will be part of that to contribute further in the society. So Seoul Labs, what does Seoul Labs do? The Seoul Labs, in order to expand uh, the uh, eco uh, ecosystem of the Seoul technology, we are going forward together with all the members of the Seoul blockchain. To be more specific, Ethereum is making all different DApps, and Ethereum ecosystem has been expanded thanks to uh, the private company Consensus. The MetaMask is also the new developer coming from the Consensus. So we saw Labs, in order to expand the ecosystem of the uh, SaaS blockchain, we are going to play a role just like Consensus uh, for the Ethereum. To be more specific, we are going to develop more uh, solutions, and we are going to provide more different infrastructures based on SaaS blockchain. In addition, based on SaaS blockchain, we are going to provide all the activities 
to provide environment for the Sasso blockchain, diversify uh, the protocol, and we're going to also support all the developers. Last but not least, just like today's conference, we're going to hold more conferences or trainings for the developers to have more global community activities so that we can expand and strengthen the human resources in the pool of the Sasso blockchain. From now on, I'm going to talk more about some projects that Seoul Labs have been promoting and also will promote in the future. Most of all, one thing that we are putting more emphasis on is wallet. Our wallet, you can read it very easily. That is called Jigap. We do know what Jigap is in Korean, right? Here, I think we have uh, my uh, acquaintance from the uh, security company working as in the security company, and I invited him here, and he asked me that whether GGAP is launched in November. So I couldn't actually understand what he meant by saying GGAP. So we, we alpha, uh, alphabetically, uh, phonetically put it in GGAP in alphabet, but someone will call it GGAP, not GGAP. That can be one anecdote that might be a little funny. But this is something that I say often is that what is most uh, Korean is the most uh, popular in the world in the end. So we try to use uh, Korean words, not translating or interpreting them into English, rather use that as it is in Korean name. Do you like the idea? Thank you very much. So, more detailed information will be given to you by the, uh, the subsequent presentation uh, provided by our uh, service manager, Mr. Nam Yumin. Please stay tuned. And here, all the participants and also all the people listening to and watching it online on the YouTube, we are providing simultaneous interpretation in uh, three different languages right now. So many people would uh, provide their attention here. This is a project called Slush. It's more like a launch pad if you want to understand it more easily. Or in other words, is to sell new coin or purchase new coin in this platform. So currently, our team uh, in Mongolia is working on this project led by our CTO. They are developing and it is planning to be launched in December. So those who mind the SIL, they can use this more stabilized uh, platform slush. They can, uh, they can convert it into Ethereum or other, and or by using the slush platform, they can purchase other coins as well. Next is Slex. Slex is a decentralized exchange, more like one inch or pancake swap or Uniswap. It's more like another kind of DEX. So based on Sasser blockchain, we have many different tokens, but many more will become in the market in the future. And if that is the case, those tokens, we, have, we do have centralized exchange that we can tokenize them, but by using the SLEX, they, uh, they can be offered here. So by the end of first part of next year, we are going to launch about 30 token projects in SLEX. With the tokens launched, they are going to be ICO on SLEX. And with SLEX, you can easily and freely exchange and trade those tokens. And other mainnets, such like either, 
Sasser blockchain service, you will see that and recognize that Sasa blockchain is easy and very cheap, then they will have a transition from other uh, platform to here. So we are going to launch a easy converting platform so that you can make contact with them in your SNS or other systems. I urge your huge expectation onwards. Next is the M Black N Block Layer 2. Service. So this brought about huge controversies or huge expectations from community since uh, relevant uh, news was published in the media outlet. But try to explain it a little further by taking this opportunity in this conference. So before going into the M block. As a CEO of Seoul Labs, there's something that I want to make clear in front of you. As I mentioned, Seoul Labs is not, it cannot be alienated from Sasu blockchain. We cannot abandon Sasu blockchain to jump to M block. If there's a rumor like that, that is not true. We are committed to expanding the blockchain uh, infrastructure of HACIL. So M block or layer two, you can put it in different ways. So our CEO of Art of Friends, uh, Lee Jung Woo, made uh, the Tasset blockchain, which was very difficult, but he was only seven, uh, one of seven people who made it possible. And the mainnet, if it is only workable on the Tasset blockchain engine, if it has to be used on the Tasset blockchain, that is, I don't think, quite right. That engine, many people would want to use it. Many different projects, many different companies really wanted to use and really want, will want to use the Sasa blockchain for their industry and for their uh, business. If they try to cater the Sasa blockchain to their own needs, that is, I think, quite welcoming uh, fact. And that is what uh, Mr. Lee jong would want. So those who really want to use Sasa blockchain from business or from industries or products, especially for uh, those game industry. They really want to make their own ecosystem by using the Sasa blockchain. And then they have to have very good engine. We do have CEO Kim Usop from Pinotech, who was here in the morning session and left. And he is working on the Cambodian national project. The, he really wants to have a mainnet business. But they have to have good engine in order to go to mainnet business. But we do have new engine here. So I'm a little uh, overreacting right now, but I tr try to calm down a little bit. That kind of engine based mainnet, in order to make it happen, for the financial entities or content businesses or for uh, game businesses, they do not have that kind of basis. That's why we are doing and providing consulting by using layer two solution that is called M block. Sorry for being a little overreacting to this issue. Yes, my presentation is almost coming to an end. So here I say that forget blockchain. That is the motto of Seoul Labs. So my hoodie that I'm wearing and also other goods that are being sold in the outside of the venue. And on the back side of that hoodie and uh, the t-shirt, you can hear the same motto there. So cut on code, forget blockchain. Sounds a little funny and a little ironic for a company developing and supporting blockchain, Solid, to say as a motto to forget blockchain. Maybe you will say 
you cannot relate this message that well. But if you think about it, you can quite easily get the answer. Based on the Tangsa blockchain, Seoul Labs would try to have the service innovation and evolution of the serve technology and also unlimited scalability to focus on the growth. We are going to make uh, the handling of the technology easy, and the byproducts can be used by the general users without keep, uh, deeply understanding the technology behind it to uh, have the high quality in the, uh, the finish and the quality of the product. To that end, I would say we have to forget blockchain. So to make it a little easy, when we use refrigerator, when we use cell phone, we don't have to fully understand the technology behind it. We don't have to understand that one in order to open the refrigerator. The only thing that we have to understand that is that refrigerator would keep something cold and keep something frozen, and cell phone is making us to communicate easily. Just like that, so let's would not do the marketing how enormous or fantastic this technology is. Rather, we are going to approach in a way that with this technology, we are going to provide this kind of easy services. All you need to do is just using it. So by to that end, we are having this as a model to say forget blockchain. Next, connect. So for the first time in our first Sasa blockchain conference, we have our slogan that is said, connect, to connect people to people, service to service, industry to industry, by using hyperconnection, convergence, and the augmented reality to have blockchain as a key point to connect everything. To express that, we uh, select his slogan, connect as our slogan. Can you relate that message? So today, we do have about 1,200 people participating uh, today's event from morning to the afternoon session. Thank you very much for your participation. We will commit ourselves to uh, expanding the insight related with the blockchain. We are going to also provide and test all different, uh, different opportunities so that we can share more opportunities and the information with the world. Literally, with Tassel blockchain, we are going to put huge impact on the society and the world. This is the last slide. Try to have this animation. <laughs> it looks like the Sasil is meeting with Seoul Labs. The Sasil eco ecosystem, in order to expand it, Seoul Labs will be committed to making Sasil as a third generation blockchain from uh, the second blockchain of Ethereum to be popular in the world. By having more partners together with Seoul Labs, we are going to make that expansion more faster. We are welcoming that opportunity. In addition to that, we are also going to do the role to enhance the value of the Seoul to enhance the nodes and to develop more nodes and more DApps. And last but not least, we have 10 to 12 staff members in Seoul Labs for making this conference possible. Everybody was working day and night, and it pulled off really successfully. I'd like to, by taking this opportunity, want to say to all my staff members that thank you very much for their effort, and thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Please give me a big round of applause to the CEO of Seoul Labs. Seoul Labs shows what has what it has been preparing for the ecosystem of Sasa, and I can feel the ambitions 
and the excellent technology of Sasol and the effort to make and vitalize Sasol ecosystem with the Sasol website. We believe with this, we can implement and realize new innovations and for the beautiful futures. And I have expectation for the vitalization of the ecosystem. Now I'd like to invite the Nam Gyu Min from Seoul Labs, who is strategy and service manager. It is he is going to introduce the project that Seoul Lab is working on, which is Wallet Project Ultrafast Worldwide Universal Virtual Asset Wallet. The project intends to implement ultra-fast transaction processing, multi-chain transaction services, and user convenience and face by leveraging the technical benefits of the Sasol blockchain. Introducing the Giga project, which aspires to provide MetaMask wallet for Sasa Plays applied with his arrival. Good afternoon. I have a lot to share today, so I would like to begin right now. I'm going to talk about GCAP. When I prepared the PPT, I was surprised to see I am the only one who put my picture up here. So I will be speaking about GCAP, and I am Nam Gyeong Min from Seoul Labs. It is good to see you all. I am currently responsible for the strategy and service manager at Seoul Labs, and actually I have four jobs. I am the director of the Korean Latino Culture Associations and Q-Block Studio. Well, when I was preparing for the Sasa blockchain, I couldn't sleep at least for a week. But I am really happy and excited to see a lot of people here today. I have been involved in planning of several blockchain services and actually more than 20 projects on centralized and decentralized wallets and they are not being used in a variety of services. After joining Solabs, I was working on the area of the strategy and service planning, and the first project is a GIGAP project. The GIGAP project that I would like to introduce and present is a massive initiative. In order to complete this massive initiative, we had to put the puzzle piece all together, and we need your attention and use. In this session, I will present how these huge puzzles are coming together, assembled one by one at a time for the project GCAP. When I was preparing and designing for the GCAP, we had to think about our directions or orientations, and we have to decide between the centralization or decentralization. I believe that many of you will agree and many of you may have similar experiences before. True, most businesses find it difficult to choose between centralization and decentralization. And many of you, it is very difficult to determine and decide. It is very tricky and difficult to, to make uh, such decisions. Seoul Labs also had a lot of debates about centralization and decentralization. We spend 10 hours every day at the advantages and disadvantages of centralization and decentralization. So we spend hours and then hours to decide the orientations of it. I think there is no right and wrong answer. That's our conclusions at the end. It was very difficult to make a clear decision because we are going to release a lot of projects and GCAP is just getting started on a slew of the projects. So let's take a look at the orientations of the GIGA project and what types of or what kind of decisions that we made for the GIGA project. First and foremost, in keeping with the Sasa Network's totally decentralized philosophy, we started our first puzzle based on the Web 3.0. GIGAP aims to be a blockchain-based decentralized system. Users maintain their own security keys and data is safely kept on the blockchain and therefore the risk is reduced greatly. For the security and privacy, 
those are the TCAP is likely concerned with safe transactions and have direct access to the security key, transparent and safe management. These are the some of the GCAP's core values. Also, data transparency and immutability decrease concerns about data forgery. On the technical side, it allows users to interact with the smart contracts and decentralized programs to leverage and many assets in a variety of ecosystems. All of these technologies will be based on the SASA technologies. It is striving for the complete decentralization. The first keyword for OLAPS, we designed Web 3.0 wallet jigup to provide consumers a highly decentralized experience. These orientation and goals are the product of Solab's work and desire to make Tiga more effective and creative. By doing so, we think we'll be able to provide users with a safe and convenient Web3 wallet experience, while also contributing to the development of the blockchain ecosystems. Now, I'd like to talk about brand identity. The Soul Labs is currently developing Web3 decentralized wallet CCAP, and it translates to a place to so store your own positions. I believe that you all understand what it means. So we want to underline the essential concept of keeping your positions or the value of a safe in the wallet's brand design. So I, we hire two designers. Munnim mainly work on this design. The wallet's logo is created by combining the first level of the word sase and jigap. Sase represents decentralization and interconnectedness. And the letter G also reflects the wallet's originality and inventiveness. The local colors are delicate purple and blue gradient. Purple is a color that represents a monarchy and prosperity, as well as class and trust. While blue is a color representing stability and trust, boosting creativity and invention even more. So overall, the wallet's brand design is minimal, but sexy, and a little bit sharpy. That's the design I, we try to achieve. And it's a graphic depiction of the wallet's secure and convenient experience. The wallet's brand design includes the following features. Communicates the basic values of blockchain and decentralizations, give a positive impression visually, portraying high quality trust, creativity, innovation, and attractiveness. And it is succinct and clear and sharpy and a little bit sexy, visually portraying a safe and convenient user experience. The design aspect of GIGA transmit to consumers its stability and originality as a blockchain wallet. Attracting a larger user base. And this is the main page of the GIGAP. It is not really available yet. GIGAP has been meticulously built to allow users to access their wallets at any time from any locations via web and mobile. In the initial version, we will make the mobile version available on the web as soon as possible. However, our goal is to give our users with an optimal experience. So, we will have a continuous update on a regular basis to improve the web and mobile versions so the users can have access to it and we are going to continue to develop it. We are going to consider user convenience so that they can freely use the apps. These updates will provide users a more convenient and stable environment and it is going to contribute to continuous involvement 
of Chica. And with this web and mobile synergies, users can have access and experience the stable services on any platform. So we are going to provide this stability and the simplicity and security. Well, we have a lot of web pages more This is still under development. So, as early as December, as late as January, we are planning to um, release it. The first versions of Chigap and Web3 Wallet have a noticeable difference, which is the UI and the UX. Focusing on the UI UX, the wallet is developed and laid up to the accessible to everyone that uses a Chigap. So we wanted to make more convenient and we wanted to make our users feel less inconvenient. So that is that was the main focus of our design. And we are at the starting on the early stage for Chigap. We are going to have a regular updates so that the Chigap users can be supported with a very efficient and effective services. And we are going to use the Web3 technology so that our users can experience it. The ultimate goal of Chigap is cutting edge experience they've come to expect from a wallet, which is, a, which is based on the Web3. And the future of Chigap, you can see it as a roadmap. With a focus on innovation and advancement on multiple fronts, we're going to take a look at what Chigap can offer. First, enhance compatibility with different blockchains. For the initial versions, Sasel is going to be supported with the regular updates. Numerous blockchain networks will be synced and supported. And then users will also be able to handle various digital assets efficiently on Chigap. We'll go more into details when I talk about the multi-chain part. Second, security upgrade and user wallet management. When the users use a Web3, there are some inconvenience that they feel. So we always thought about how to make it more convenient so that our users can use it conveniently and can have a better access to it. And now I would like to go more into details when I talk about the security keys and account management later. And last but not least, the user experience and must be constantly improved. We are going to receive the feedbacks continuously and we are going to analyze them. And based on that, we're going to continuously improve Chica based on this user experience. UI UX design innovations and convenience were at the core of our considerations so that our users can use Chica more conveniently. From the various perspective, we are going to aim and put an effort for the innovation and development so that Chica can provide a strong and various Web3 wallet experience to our users and it is going to contribute to continuous development of the blockchain ecosystems. Now I would like to talk about multi-chain. Multi-chain refers to connecting of multiple blockchains. As you can see at the top, well, there, it is divided into two parts, and you can think it as a multi-chain ecosystems. The concept rose of address the limitations that each blockchain is its own network, making it difficult to transfer assets between blockchains. So that is the concept of rose. Multi-chains enable to grow the blockchain ecosystems and boost efficiency by allowing asset transfer while keeping the strength of each blockchain. For most of the multi-chains, as you can see at the center, bridges are unavoidably needed. Most of the multi-chains use bridges, and these bridges are the technology that then enable assets to be moved between the 
chains and it needs additional systems. So it requires system development and the development cost. And also it can be a target for hacking with a single flow affecting the entire ecosystems. So another issue with the using bridge is incurring fees or commissions. And at the bottom, there is a multi-chain ecosystem that we are going to use for SASL. SIGAP will make use of SASL's multi-chain network technology. There is a multi-chain connected transaction technology of SAS, so without having bridges, the users can directly trade even at the onboarding stage. This technology enables assets to be transferred between blockchain networks without the usage of bridges. It permits direct transactions without the use of intermediary systems allowing for the efficient flow of the assets between the ecosystems. Furthermore, in consideration of the security and efficiency, the user experience will be improved greatly. This technology is playing a key role in doing so. By providing consumers with a safe and efficient blockchain experience, these revolutionary technologies will have a tremendous, tremendous impact on GIGAP and the ecosystem of the blockchain. And the most important part you have to know is Soul Bowl token, which is sure, which is SBT. Can you raise your hands if you have heard of it? SBT, have you guys heard of it? Not many of you. So let me briefly talk about that. SBT, the concept was first coined in the January 2022. Well, it was a document ver verified by the developer of Ethereum, Vitalik. It is one of the topic that has received a lot of attention recently. So let's go over Soulbound. Soulbound. There is a soul bound written in orange. This is Gwisok in Korean. Well, actually, it is a word from the video game World of Warcraft. And actually, I am the gamer, and Vitalik was a soul gamer as well. If an item is dropped, it is associated with a specific character, so it is actually bound to that character. Once the item is bound to that character, it cannot be treated or given to other characters. And this concept was applied to tokens, so it was a concept to create a non-tradable token, and that concept that was applied to the SBT. And except for the issuer, it is an idea that cannot be traded or located. In other words, it is an NFT, but not marketable NFT. Even more amazing is that this SBT, well, actually, I was thinking about how to apply this SBT, but surprisingly, it was already applied and in use in the SAS network. So you may wonder how these non-tradable NFTs can be used. This SBT, or non-tradable NFT, is already implemented in the network. Because, well, actually, you guys want to trade NFT. If you cannot trade NFT, so what is the purpose of it? You may wonder. The Soul Labs try to find the applications for the SBT, and it is still working on more. The first way to apply SBT is related to account and security key storage method. The users who use the decentralized wallets and most of the issues they experience is a loss. Some people lose their digital wallets and forgot their passwords who use the wallet based on the Web 3.0. Maybe 
It may be more difficult to find a person who has never lost their wallet. Maybe they lost or device, device, so there is uh, some problems, they forgot the recovery patterns. Maybe there are many reasons why you forgot and uh, you lost the wallet. And I think most of users experience that. So Seoul Labs has applied this SBT and it has been applied for a patent for this technique. And this technology is going to be applied to the authentications. So it is um, based on the signing up for the blockchain with a two-factor password in the SBT at the center. Maybe it is difficult to see. However, it is going to be posted on our homepage so you can see more information regarding this. So Seoul Labs intends to include the SBT security mechanism in the future upgrades to GCAP. Also, the SBT applications already applied to Sasan Network is what we are going to ha apply for the patent for, and we're going to be shared. This is going to be used for the governance, the credit verifications, voting, public offerings, and more. This opens the door for using SBT for further other services. Of course, having this patent is important. However, you also need to think about the possible and the potential way of using SBT techniques. If you are a corporation or the developer interested in SBT or you want to collaborate with the Seoul Labs and the Sasol to realize and put our imagination into the real world, I hope I like to ask all of you to take on the board with us. Now, I would like to talk about the minting. Today, we are going to have GIGAP coins minted. GIGAP coins are issued to activate the GIGAP wallet ecosystem and making using the wallet more convenient and secure. Users may use this wallet more easily and safely, and GIGAP tokens will be used to fund wallet growth and development. And it's going to be continuously used for the expansion and development. We are going to add several features like layer 2 coin trading, new token issuance and trading. And also we are going to apply for the patent and we are going to allow many, many developers to develop a service in syncing with a GIGAP wallet. And the poll, the CTO poll will oversee the minting. Are you ready? We are going to start minting immediately. Now we'd like to begin. So one billion is going to be the size of GCAP. And the GIP, GIP, GIP is going to And we are going to operate the additional systems to make it more efficient and convenient. And we are going to have more projects. And for the selected projects, we are going to support with the GIP. And GIP tokens can be used by the developers and users all together. We now, we completed the minting with the explorers. Let's check. So we will put the contract address. And then you can see the token information. We'd like to declare the tokens are minted successfully. Please give a big round of applause. GIGAP Coin is going to vitalize the ecosystem and contribute to the vitalization of the Web 3.0 ecosystems. It's going to have a great impact on the future. First, it is going to give and it increases the user benefits. 
And the, these rewards can be used to attract and induce users to actively use this coins, and it's going to contribute to active expansions of the wallet. The token economy is going to be shared via various homepages and marketing materials. Now, I would like I invited all of you to the world of GIGAP at this conference. As I told you at the beginning, GIGAP is not simply a technological development. It contributes and contains the visions and values for the digital assets and blockchain ecosystems. Of course, we could not show you the whole puzzle or whole picture of GIGAP. However, I hope that it was a great opportunity for you to see the directions, orientations of the GIGA projects that we are currently working on. In the coming Web3 world, GIGA is just the beginning of a brighter future. We are thrilled to be a part of the third generation of blockchain, and your participation and enthusiasm, as I told you before, your usage for the Chika will be the driving force behind this initiative. We are excited to see Chika add more value and enrichment to your digital journey. That was it for my presentation. Thank you very much. Once again, please give a big round of applause to Mr. Nam Hyun-min to talk about the advantages of the Sasul Chigap, to talk about the multi-chain transaction service and the hyper-transaction process, and also we'll think about the convenience of the users. Now we are going to talk about the development direction of Web3 games. Uh, the presentation will be made by uh, the head of the department of WeMade, Mr. Kim Sung-gun. Currently, he is the head of the department of the business to talk about the WeMade onboarding service. Mr. Kim is going to talk about centering on the onboarding process of WeMix Play to talk about the cautions when we design Web3 game and also main principles that we have to buy by. Please Please give a big round of applause to Mr. Kim Sung-gun. Good afternoon. I am Kim Sung-gun to talk about the development direction of Web3 Game as introduced it's been about 15 years since I first joined in the game industry. I am now working as a PM in WeMade to take care of the WeMix onboarding. So onboarding means we are putting the games on the on the on the WeMix platform and to support all the relevant technologies. The game, the service based on contents based on the fun factors to individuals, to society, we can provide positive values in the world and society. This is very valuable and very meaningful. The entertainment industry, just like cartoon, webtoon, or novels, they have similarities, but for game, as a content, individuals will participate in directly and can get their own experience. That is a unique characteristics of game, I believe. With that belief, I'm working in the game business for more than 10 years. The another axis of uh, this presentation is blockchain. In my presentation, the blockchain enables decentralization. The decentralization is enabled by blockchain, which can also provide positive influence in the society and also can open a new chapter for the society. That is also another belief that I have. We 
do have many participants in the venue today. I think you have more knowledge about blockchain, more do so in Seoul Labs who are doing the new uh, trial and experiment. And also there are some people who do not know much about blockchain but have uh, much uh, curiosity. After finishing this conference, I hope your pure interest can be turned into the belief, just like I have. I will start my presentation. My topic for presentation is the consideration that we have to put into when we design Web3 games. In order to talk about that, we first have to think about the, what it means by saying Web3 game. In the history, Web3 game is not that difficult. We combine blockchain into game technically, that is Web3 game. But going further, by applying blockchain technology, individual users can create uh, the value of the game and also can trade their own values with other uh, users. In the history, there are some milestones that we can look into. I cannot go into each and every one of them, but one of a uh, famous thing is that back in 2021, in May, there was an Xe Infinity, the game that was very popular in the community. This, as you can see on the left side, there are three different, uh, very cute uh, icons, and three versus three, there can have their game. And this Xe were uh, sold as an NFT. And when they uh, get their victory, then they can go to, uh, go, go to AXS, that is the governance token of this X infinity. In game industry, they have index that is called DAU. That means the number of users connected to the game on a daily basis. If the DAU is about 100,000, that we call it successful. But around the world, um, the X infinity maximum 2.7 million DAU was recorded, and the governance token AXF, a ASX achieved about a $157 as a maximum value. And there was a video that was released on YouTube, Play to Earn, in April. Uh, they first coined the term of P2E. It's a Web3 game. At the same time, P2E, they coined two terms simultaneously. And the same year, in August, another game was launched that is called Mir4 Global. Mir4 Global it was first launched in Korea a few years ago and they, abide, they uh, combined the uh, blockchain here to have mid for global. It has really high bar to go into and enjoy the game. They first have to purchase the exit that was NFT format. For each of the icon, it costs about 600 to 700,000 won. So when you first start the game, you have to invest about one to two million won worth of money. But if when it was a boom, if you play this game, you can earn uh, the profit of 600 to 700,000 won because it was a COVID-19 uh, period. So it was very popular in the uh, Northeast Asian countries. But in order to lower the bar, those who are not uh, paying money or paying, uh, who are not using money, those uh, the uh, users can also mine some tokens inside to play the game. So before, the users, they were very light users, using about only two hours. And within that amount of time, 20 to 30 minutes of time would be enough to, for them to do all the daily tasks. But before, there are many different contents inside. That was also tested a few years ago in Korea, and the service went global to have the Mir4 Global, to have about 2.5 million DAU as maximum. And that was the basis of us to have the US onboarding um, project in our For a game, what does uh, the Web3 have its meaning? 
For me, I first um, acquainted with game with a disc. Maybe there are some people older than me. I use disc and I uh, switch the disc to uh, play game just like Parisian Prince or others. But at the end of 1990, when we have internet, and the definition of game was changed. The game was used to be game used to be a solo play. You clear the mission on your own. But after uh, with the internet introduced, we can go together with other users on the internet. We can do the game together. And four to five people working together, it was expanded to 10,000 to 20,000 people to collaborate, cooperate with each other, or compete against each other. And they can uh, enjoy those process. There are many critical attempts in other areas, but for game, the fun factor was the gist of it. And 10 to 20 years later, mobile world was uh, more generalized. We have the high time of mobile in 2010 to 2020. There was a paradigm shift. Internet made a game from solo play to multiplayer. In mobile, with the advent of mobile play, in order for me to uh, log in or connect to the inter to the game, I have to be at home or be at the PC room to connect it. But with mobile, I don't have to go anywhere. Uh, anywhere that I'm here and wherever I, wherever I go, that is a place that I can play game. So on the move, in subway, in, um, in restroom, and anywhere, you can easily connect to uh, the mobile to play games. Ten years has passed since then. To come to 2020 to 2021, now we are talking about the Web 3.0 game. This is a beginning stage, but I can say that this is a starting of the paradigm shift with the Web 3.0. So the online and mobile was centering on connection in the daily and in the, in the general place. But right now with the Web 3.0, we can connect the values outside of the, the uh, game arena. And that was supported and enabled by the blockchain technology. That is a value of the Web 3.0. With that, I believe that Web 3.0 provides lots of meanings. Now, it's been about 10 minutes that I started my uh, presentation. So you do know we mix and others, but you do not actually know uh, who I am. Maybe some people would say that who is that person to talk about all those things. And let me talk briefly about why I'm talking about this. Just like I said, I am out of the old service. I am working on onboarding the uh, games on the Remix play, play. I'm going to talk about each of the features of our game, but from 2021, but starting from the Mid4 Global, uh, we have successfully onboarded about 40 uh, games and they are being provided as a service. And on the contract, the contract is done by other departments, but right now up to 130 to 140 games are being contracted, and 30 to 40 uh, services are being uh, on live and uh, provided to people. And maximum 130 to 140 games will be uh, provided by Remix Play if I successfully onboard them. And to briefly talk about our service, the Web 2.0 games, which is relevant of uh, the uh, blockchain or those games that are preparing for the Web 3.0, we are uh, providing the all-in-one package. But before the blockchain, we actually haven't talked about decentralization. We uh, have uh, that decentralization is a key. So for Web uh, 2.0, we have to think about um, the wallet and that's 
and another team, we have to think about market to give a service. Each of the service features should be considered and decided by each of the developer. The same for the Seoul Labs. We, we mix play with all these service features. We are combining them into one and provide that simultaneously to our contracted partners. To talk about all the interfaces and all the features to be workable and enabled. And for Web 3.0 games, the platform and the service provider, we are not the only one. Globally, there are many different service providers like us. And we, as part of the platform service provider, we, there are many companies working as a platform service provider. Among them, however, the one unique service that we are providing can be defined into two different categories. Basically, Binance or other mainnet that usually unload um, games. One famous case is the Binance Polygon or Kronos these days. There are many other chains. And I believe we are one of the popular a platform service provider with them. But one unique factor is that those main app provide those and the developers have to take care of all the application. But for us, in order for us to provide an established interface, you know, uh, without knowing much about the interface technology, we can support all the developer development. And those who are knowing more about the Web 2.0, we are helping them to have successful transition to Web 3.0 by having the forum or in-person consulting about up to 130 to 140 uh, agencies or developers can get help from us. Next is the basis. The, all the things that we are doing in business, if they don't have any understanding about Web 3.0, we explain it. And if we answer all the questions, they do know about the games. But what is the thing that we have to apply and what reference we have to use, the topic and the policy, these are some things that they have haven't have much knowledge on. So uh, in the process of launching 40, up to 40 uh, games in our mimix, all the regulations and changes in the market, we took that into account. We are guiding them successfully for the past two years. About four 40 games were onboarded on remix by using our platform. There were many trials and errors. I will uh, briefly explain all the trials and errors in my presentation. So it can be uh, summarized into six points. There are a lot of things that I can talk about. One hour is not even enough. Two to three hours of talking would be enough for me to persuade them and explain in detail. But uh, to the interest of time, I will uh, make the most of the time to explain uh, the gist of it. There might be some people who are coming from developing country, developer companies, then there will be really useful information if you are preparing for the transition or whatsoever. When you play, prepare for the game, you see users uh, and categories I'm into three, light, mid, and hardcore user. Uh, the light are the ones who are not purchasing any in the game. Hardcore users, they are using game up to eight hours and pay a lot of money up to 800,000 one max minimum in the game a month. There are many people who play game for fun. All the developers that I met while applying Web3, still, they only think about players as players. The transition to Web 3.0, whether it's profit or DAU for traffic, anything that you do is to contribute to the game. So users should be divided into players and other users who do the game only for the profit because they think they are lucrative. And another one is that not even installing, they only think about the white paper and just investing inside. They are holder. What I'm thinking is that by applying Web, web 3.0, we have to think about well-established economics. 
and we have to put game on it. When designing or structuring the game, you have to take into account three different groups that I just mentioned economy mentioned before to think about token economy. Uh, second is the, uh, the traps in the uh, user rates. There's a, call, uh, there's a term called the drainage. You would have, you would already have heard of Anipang. At least one time you have uh, used the Anipang. Maybe as an event, yes, let's say that they distribute a lot of hearts. Let's say I have 10,000 hearts. A thousand hearts, it's really hard to use and use up. And the, um, the game developer, they have to get profit continuously. Then you have to focus on people consume all the hearts. Maybe you have to provide content or provide some situation they have to use up all the hearts. So that is called heart drainage. And they ask us to uh, establish or set a heart drainage. Here, we have to think about the consuming consumption rate. The developers usually say that the game token, whether it be NFT or token, and the goods when they're connected, and they think that if uh, that is highly related, then the token economy will be cyclical. But the internal value of the game it can be going into the external part. They have to go outside and come inside again to have a cyclical and virtual cycle. Let's say I have 10,000 hearts or token and it is converted and then there was the consumed again, it is useless. The owner and the player, the owner provide token and those players for fun, they have to buy it and they have to use it. Then we can create value from that token. That kind of cycle should be created to make the value. Those who are developing game for a long time, they don't think about that cyclical cycle. Rather, they only think about or focusing on consumption itself. So what I want to talk about is that not only thinking about goods, we have to think about the cyclical cycle between three different users, the earners and the users and just the investors. If those investments or the use is uh, explosively increased and the use, that is the one way that we can go. I just keep talking about this one, but it does not work and they easily understand this one. Those who are here, I hope you can understand this. So that's why I put it in the former part of my presentation. So the token economy that I mentioned earlier, for token, because of the loading in the transaction, they uh, do not use, uh, have the uh, system that they can easily or readily use this one. Rather, they have to convert it first to use it. When they trade it, so there's a, a trade uh, ratio. This trade ratio is something they focus on to manage this token, but that is not always successful. They, you have to plan out this by taking into account more factors, not only the token itself. If you lower the value for the trade, then you have to enhance it. If you want to enhance it, then you have to the, uh, the value of the goods lower. So this is very difficult and complicated. Is it far different or complicated uh, compared to the time that you focus only on game? But without considering these facts, only applying uh, the game itself, that will not go to the profit. So I just came all the way up to the point three. You also have to put more focus on not only game itself, or the, but the external factors. And the fourth point is the limitation of the one a game, one token system. So game ultimately have to be taken into account of the factor of the investors. Investors and those people, they have the belief that in the end or at the end of the day, the value of the token will increase. But most of the games, 
they have the term PLC, they have their own life cycle. Maybe the World of Warcraft or a lineage of the NCSoft who provide those services more than 20 years, but only limited amount of number. So most of the games, they have their own mere life cycle, which would be very short, um, as low uh, as little as six to eight months, up to uh, many years. But they believe that we usually do this way without thinking about life cycle. That's why we are doing it uh, as other people do. But that is not the good way. I suggest that one company use just one token it, or using the token that already have built the cyclical cycle in itself. So when you look at this one, there are many different game tokens. I just extracted some part of it. And on the right, we only have one name connected to the token. So for one game, they have one token. And in some cases, for one game, they um, they uh, provide different tokens. I actually do not suggest this idea as a recommendation. Fifth, so we have to manage the, the distributed amount of token. Not only token, but also USD or Korean won. We have to do the management of the unit, uh, distributed amount of money. That is done for dollar, Fed was doing, and our one is done by the, Korea, the Bank of Korea. But the game, they do not do it. I said that the AU is really important. Let's say we have 100,000 people as the AU, and they actually do not consider the 400,000 DAU, what is the maximum value that we can have for token? Let's say that we have a distributed about a 0.1 billion token distributed yesterday, and because of some issue, we have 100,000 DAU and we have about 10 billion uh, tokens distributed today. This situation is very serious, but nobody is considering this much. So as an investor, when they uh, look at uh, the situation, they try to choose, I am recommend them to choose uh, the token, the game, whose white paper explains such a situation very in detail. For token ecosystem, it's more like a community. Token without the uh, distributed amount, it does not have its value. If token is transacted, that means the users are actively using it. And if that is the case, people will widely um, converse or discuss about this one. And um, they run their community for game. But token community need to be managed in itself or as one of the category in addition to the game community because game uh, discussion and the token discussion, their language and their pattern is far different from one another. We have to provide timely information to them knowing their intention and their needs. That These are some lessons learned that I had while onboarding about 40 games. That's why I try to share this information with you today. So here, these are the questions that I left in the slide. So these are the questions while uh, having in-person discussions with about more than 70 developers. These are the questions commonly asked. First is uh, Web 3.0, is it kind of a fashion? And the second question is that Web 3.0, is it uh, profitable? such as NFT or token. So last question, they said, Web uh, 3.0, is it a must? Even after uh, co signing the contract, they kept on asking this question. In the earlier stage, we had some uh, pondering on this. With much experience right now, I can confidently say this. Is it a fashion? I already uh, mentioned about this right here. In the decentralized uh, world, the, the cash, if we have cash, it is validated by the central bank. And decentralization and their needs is that individuals, if they try to create their own value without belonging to any of the entity, if they can create their own value, 
that was started from that fundamental need. That's why the decentralization and uh, the blockchain technology that can enable that decentralization, it would only grow in the future. Of course, there were some bubbles back into uh, about 20 years ago in blockchain, and there were some ups and downs because of the bubble up until now. But still, it can become a standard of technology and can have huge influence in the society. And next, is it profitable? From the perspective of gain, ultimately, the uh, the profit comes down to the value. If it uh, it has value, then uh, people would uh, come to it, and it would create value and profit. Those who are asking this question is, for example, there's a game from Blizzard, um, the uh, Diablo. There's a uh, um, some some potions, some potions. Uh, that can be sold as a thousand thousand one in Web 3.0, and um, in Web 3.0 game to have token and to enhance consume uh, consumption. Then maybe if they enhance uh, the value or the price, then maybe uh, the value will be decreased. But ultimately, the users will buy it anyway. And if they can, uh, they have to buy those things with a token and they don't have token, then maybe the cycle will not be completed. That kind of original um, question is something that we have to consider. We don't know the answer yet, but for Web 3.0 game, the point is that we have to connect and extract the value inside the game to outside of the game and freely put that value back into the game to have a cyclical cycle ready. And when we can do that, we can create values. The reference to uh, back that up, we have to make those references on our own. And third, do we have to do the transition to Web 3.0? So last week, we had G-Star 2023 in Busan, Mexico. I went there. I saw many really good games because I have to do the onboarding of really good games. I had two insights there. First, about 10 years ago, game was very difficult to make. Each and every developer have to know source program and everything. But this time we have the Unity and other uh, engineering language, so we can use them very easily. And AI is developed further. So it's very easy to make games. One good thing there is that really difficult to differentiate one game from another. If you do not have unique idea, then it's really uh, difficult to be competitive in the market. That's why those who uh, have huge capital, the huge publishers, they can be the only ones surviving in the market. That's the market, how it goes in uh, the market. So do we have to do Web3 Point oh, yes. Other than this one, do we have any other technology that can have huge momentum? Maybe AI, yes. But huge developers and publishers can use it as well. But Web 3.0, this is the only thing that small and big a publisher can use at the same time. That's why I think transition to Web 3.0 is must. Maybe think about it twice or three times if you think this is not. I thought uh, there are not many uh, points, so I can I would not use up all the time, but I use up all the time. I actually uh, deliver all the things that I really want to deliver. Now I used up 30 minutes of time, but after having 30 minutes of presentation, listening to it, I hope if there are some people who uh, have only curiosity in the beginning. Hope your curiosity was transitioned to uh, the value and belief. Thank you. Please give him a big round of applause. Mr. Kim sang share shared his insights on the user experience security, the transparency of the economic model, and NFT utilization. It was very helpful. When it combines game industry with the blockchain industry, the new business opportunities will be a lot greater. So I I think it is a very core industry that has a blockchain ecosystem needs to pay attention to. Now I would like to invite the collaboration professor Yun Sok-bin from Seokang University to talk about the trends and evolution of 
NFT industry. He is going to share new insights and fresh insights about NFT. The NFT industry, thanks to technology advancement, TSK diversification, integration into numerous industry has been evolving. And however, the blockchain technology is still suffering from limited decentralization and security issues. So in order to resolve these issues, the role of the next generation blockchain NFT industry future will be examined. And please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good afternoon. I have a very huge picture over here. I am Yun Sak Bin and call me Bin. So you can just call me Bin. And I am working at Sagang University. And actually, I will start my presentation right now. And I would like to talk about the NFT industry trend and technology. So, well, actually, I have been here since the morning. And I listened to so many wonderful presentations today. And I was, I think I'm going to talk about the future orientations of the industry. And there are many changes in this industry. And I would like to share some of my insights today. My name is Yun Sak Bin. I have email address and Kakao Talk ID here. So feel free to contact me. If, and actually, I can give more data if you become a good friend of mine. So, well, today's theme is connect. And trust is my identity. So uh, connecting technologies, I do have a great interest in connecting technologies. So I worked at IBM and Oracle before, and I was used to be a developer. And now I have a great attention and aspirations in helping startups. So I hope that we can all grow together. Well, I am collaboration professor at Sagangde University, and actually I am also a part of the Korean Society of Blockchain. And I have a great interest in blockchain AI. So if you please feel free to contact me so we can have full discussions and share data. And actually, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me so I can give you some data and the information. Well, many people will misunderstand that I'm really old. Because, but the professor who delivered the remarks in the morning are a lot older than me, so don't uh, misunderstand my age. So, well, actually, uh, I will start with these three terms, design thinking, new startup, and agile. The most important term is innovation, so-called open innovation is really key. The innovations cannot be implemented by only one or, or a single individual. This should be more an you know, open innovation based on the collaborations between the individuals and between the companies. So innovation itself well, cannot be achieved by a single individual. I work in the Oracle and IBM before, but regardless uh, the, of the size of the companies, the innovations cannot be achieved by a single company or by single individual. So I can see that how Sasel is collaborating with the Seoul Labs, and so I would like to stress the importance of the collaborations in this era. And Gartner also come up and stress the terms of combined design thinking, lean startup, and agile. These are all connected. I love this image. Humans are hooked. They are watching and they are reading something from the smartphones. Well, actually, I rode bus today and everybody was looking at these smartphones. However, machines are learning. ChatGPT is a big word right now, and the ChatGPT is learning very quickly like this. And so when you use a smartphone, the data is going to accumulate and it's going to be shared with the machines. Well, actually, I have two children. I have one a child in the university and one child in high school. So actually, whenever we have dinner or lunch together, we don't really talk that much. The, uh, my daughter is falling, uh, falling in love with the BTS. Actually, my wife texts me rather than talking directly to me. So as you can see from this image, well, actually, although my child is grade 10, and I gave her 
a laptop because of the COVID. Well, actually, he, she needed to take some online lectures, and I thought, like, oh, she's going to use the laptop for playing games. And yeah, of course, she played Battleground. And I realized something at that point. Have you heard of the Roblox a company? When my child is all grown up, is it going to is she going to use a bank? No. One, at one point, she actually didn't study English that much, but at one point, I just realized that she can communicate with friends from other countries, and she started chatting in different languages. And this is not a game. They are actually living in that world. About six years ago, when my child was in grade six, and she paid 600,000 for the Roblox, it's not Bitcoin, uh, because she was living in that world. So she had to pay something, and she had to use this money to build something in the virtual world. So many people are here today. So when you think about the next generation or the G generations, you have to think about the different views or the nature. Well, my children are not using cacao. So they are not using cacao. So in order to communicate with, um, you, you have to think about the next generations. So have you seen this? Um, do you know these singers? Yes, I can see your age. Well, actually, if you think of Finkel or Sista, well, you're wrong. It is Mamamoo. Well, I'm a real fan, a big fan of Mamamoo, actually. I, I, it is kind of first time for me to see not many hands in there. Well, actually, I want to give you a gift if you know all of their names. Mumbai, Sola, Kin, Hasa. And actually, I met them in person, and they are excellent singers and rappers. And I can see that they are true values when they come together. So, don't think it too difficult for the district evolution. ABCD, AI, blockchain, cloud data. All of these are being combined and converged in the fourth revolution. So, PLTS, business. Buck, technology, business, law, technology, services. So it's like combinations of different technologies. So it's like um, a good synergies of different members of the Go groups in Korea. So don't think it too hard. Don't think it too, don't take it as a too difficult topic. And that's the thing I just wanted to stress out. And the, when someone mentioned the P2P, it, I thought it means peer-to-peer. -peer. But we are now entering the era of the protocol. So we are actually towards the decentralizations, right? So we are actually moving from platform to the protocol. This is a new trend that we are facing. So when I, uh, based on my experience, Web 2.0, well, actually the whole trend is being altered and changed. The BOK and actually processing CBDC because the technological trend is altering. So ideas can be very good to have the co-growth in the future. So, data collections, data processing, and new innovations. And these are the services. We call it as a, sometimes a data dev or the data lakes. The most important part here is that but data is really important, and actually government see the importance of the blockchain a little bit lesser. But I thought like blockchain is like a blockchain is like a tank with a full water. However, you sometimes undermine the importance of the filter, and I thought like the role of the blockchain here is more like a filter. So, and AI is like a black box. So AI kind of examines and detects the cause of specific incident. So. 
AI data is really important. However, blockchain is acting as a filter. That is the role of the blockchain that I wanted to stress out. And the data-driven innovations with the data, we are creating and we are having these innovations. And I like to stress my data. ERP, CRM. Well, actually, that was the project I focused on. However, my data for now is really important. And there is no separate blockchain technology from my data. Well, actually, when I was lecturing four years ago, I mentioned this idea. But I think my data is going to lead another era of the my AI. On the base on the web 3.0. So, and we are going to have a new protocol based on the web 3.0 for the my data. And I think the SASL and the SOL Labs can contribute to it. And I can say that my AI is going to be emerging. MS sometimes calls it as, let's say that there is a competitor, and when you are promoted, and the only one should be promoted, and actually there is a competitive, competitor, and we are like going against it, and we have to show the data, and we have to show them how our AI is smart enough, and we have to do the filtering, and also in this in this vein, you have to consider the perspective of the ABCD, A of blockchain cloud data. And this is a data that I got from my co-professor. On the left there is an offline, and on the right there is an online. You are switching from offline to the online. This is what we call this the transform. The funny thing happened. Kakao uh, and Naver are the online companies. However, when you go to Gangnam area, they are offline stores. Of course, they are online companies. However, they are creating something physical. So we call it as an analog transform. So, as you can see, the offline and online are being converged, and this is more like a metaverse. AI, blockchain, metaverse, you cannot think them as separately. They, they are all connected and converged all together. So blockchain itself is a platform that we should pay attention to. So now I'd like to talk about the AI and blockchain data. Currency, assets, and blockchain is a trust technology, so it can be seen as a roots. You can start from the roots, and it is bearing the fruits, just like as you see in the picture. AI is the main character, and the blockchain is like a good extra because it kind of makes the main character stands out. So, of course, AI is a very important character. However, blockchain is helping this AI to stand out. So, I can stress the importance of the blockchain technology. So. And there are two intelligence, one AI, second blockchain. This is more like a collective intelligence, if you will. There is, only, there is not only one intelligence. AI is the area of the innovations. What about the blockchain? It's more like a focusing on the distributions. Of course, the AI should be the area that we have to focus more. However, we have to strike the balance between the two. AI is, cre is creating innovations, and blockchain should be responsible for the distribution A at the same time. So AI data is really important, but, it, but also the blockchain is really important, striking the balance, focusing on the distribution. So I think it is the concept that you should keep in mind. So, Web 3.0, well, actually, my oldest child is in the university, and, well, actually, when we used the internet together, we used Web 1.0, it was only for reading. 
from the internet. Well, well, we were amazed by the, having this image on the home page. So it was only available for reading. However, based on the Web 2.0, we are allowed to read and write all together. However, when we talk about Web 3.0, you can read, write, and you can own it. It also includes the concept of the data ownerships. And you can upload the picture. And do you get the reward? No. The, I can contribute to increase the stock prices of the Facebook if I upload the image of the Facebook. However, I'm not giving the rewards. However, if I have the ownership of my data, I can get the rewards. So for the Web 3.0, we can read, write, and own it. Now, it shows we are shifting from the platform to protocol ecosystem. So I agree on that concept. So we are now approaching to the protocol economy. Decentralization and the trustless and permissionless are the key features of the Web 3.0. And I think this is the area where the blockchain technology is playing a key role. So whenever I have a meeting with this government agency, they always question about, they are just changing the names and their basic businesses are the same, but I'm always saying that they are different and they are focusing on the decentralization, trustless and permissionless. And actually, I'm not giving a lecture on the blockchain. Of course, there are five elements, encryption, immutability, tokenization, decentralization, distribution. And I would like to just give you the hint on the five elements of the blockchain technology. However, if you take a look at this image, it might not be clear to see, but at the first stage, the encryption, Internet of Information, Internet of Information, and it is moved on to the second stage, which is the Internet of Content, and now it is moved to the third stage, Internet of Values. So this kind of shows how this blockchain technology has been evolved. So at the beginning, there were only contents available, and now it is becoming our values. And also, we are creating more and more as we progress. IoT, AI, and the ownership authentication. Some of you may not be familiar with this. You have IDs and driving license, of course. And actually, there is a blockchain material in it. I have a mobile ID. And I think it's going to be in, that element is going to be included in the in our real ID. So I think the GigaP that was mentioned previously is going to the new universal wallet that we are going to be using. AI blockchain and IoT well actually they were segmented and separated before now, but they all being converged in order to create the trust data infrastructure. Well, actually, when I was listening to the lecture in the morning, I agreed on the presenters on the aspect of trust. AI, blockchain, IoT were segmented before, but now they are being converged. And you can think them as the one intelligent trust data infrastructure. So when you take a look at this reference model for Web 3.0, there's a US service gateway platform infrastructure. At the top, there's a wallet, Web 3.0 wallet. Complex purchase is going to be a new term for the future. And the financial systems will be all combined and converged. So let's say like but for your wage, you can earn 50% of the wage in the real currency and you can get 50% of uh, the cryptocurrency, I think all the financial products or the financial forms will be combined and conversion, and they're going to be linked in one single system, regardless of its status of physical or virtual. Of course, there are many obstacles to overcome. However, it is safe for Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, 
And actually, they are preparing for these complex and converged financial systems. And we have a lot of startups in Korea, such as Sasson and Sao Labs. And we have a lot of participants, so we have to gather our wisdom together to respond to that future. And next, infrastructure, platform, gateway, service, UI. This seems very complicated. This, is, uh, this seems more like a Lego. The most important part here is that there is a greater in the UI area. So we have to think about who is going to get the wallet in the end. So you can call it as a wallet or... Now I'd like to deep dive into the NFT and digital assets. Digital assets refer to any kind of asset that can be represented in digital forms. It can be digital items, it can be a physical asset. And it is actually trying, it is actually extending its boundary to the actual real world or the physical assets. Pictures, images, and music were actually seen as digital assets before. However, now its boundary is expanding to the real physical assets. So NFT refers to non-fungible asset, and you can see that this NFT is actually being connected to the real world. And converged and complex finance, well, is another area that we need to pay attention to when it comes to digital asset because the asset and the actual finance financial systems are being converged into together. So digital assetizations consist of two parts, digitizations and proof. And actually there are different types of digital assets, cash, CBDC deadline, I think they are testing. Many countries are taking a look at the cash or the spot ETF or the coin nutrients. And physical assets such as like houses, buildings, and IP, and the database, digital assets. Data itself can be seen as a digital asset. Data is like a giving them, um, making something real, if you will. Data is a giving a life to the non living thing. So. Blockchain is one of the technologies for the digital assetizations. So you can think it as a new tech, one of the technologies for the digital assetizations. And this is the history of the NFT and it. It started its journey from nine. NFT marketplace was emerged in the 2017 and ERC and I'd like to share one example. Well, actually, I am working at Sagang University at the head of our center, said that in 2013 or in 2014, hold the ha their hands, hold the hands of the newbies, and the, we gave and treated them with pizzas. And he kind of showed how you can use this Bitcoin to purchase Coke and the pizza. Well, that's what actually we did at that point. Well, actually, I am working on the technical side or technological side a lot. And there is OpenSea in the 2017, and there's the ERC721 was a big hit. And there is a metaverse and the P2E. Oh, this is the steps that has been the Bitcoin or the NFT or the deed have been gone through. We have exchanges and there are a lot of some exchanges. However, there are a lot of unicorn companies or unicorn startups in other countries. Financial service, NFT. Well, since we are focusing on the NFT, there are a lot of companies like Dapper and the Mythical, and they're unicorns. We might have a new um, innovative services, but we are only focusing on the small part of it. That's so sad. And now I'd like to talk about the NFT services, listing agency, the curation services. Of course, there are some issues and there are some ways to resolve them. And um, for the marketplace, 
for their creation services, I think all of them can be combined into one service. So let me talk about the NFT technology, token and asset type. You know what fungible is? It's like the same as a Bitcoin. It can be traded and it can be substituted. However, when you say non-fungible, it is not fungible. It cannot be substituted. You cannot sub you cannot trade these two different images or the pictures as you can see from this screen. And I would like to go a little bit deeper in this slide. You know what O-Chain is, right? And O-Chain is outside of the blockchain. So there is a token on-chain. And there is a link. And there is a metadata in off-chain. And IPFS and file system can be used to bring the data. So the cloud and legacy systems are, ref are referring to the off-chain and blockchain is referring to the on-chain. So it is a very important concept to keep in mind. So, so the solops, well, NFT structure is quite similar. So I hope that, that you can keep this slide in mind. There is an NFT for on-chain and there is a metadata and that is the file slash cloud legacy system for the off-chain. And NFT is a way to assetize. So assetization of the data is can be seen as an NFT. So there is a technical part, of course, there is a service part of virtual world, the trading, BOIC. I know it is very difficult to understand from this slide. Well, at the beginning, they started off with a very high price. However, it decreased greatly dramatically. There are different types of the service layers, PFE games, financial positions. A few years ago, I went to Miami for the lecture. And after the lecture, the art bed of the Miamis, and I was not good at English, and I was lining up, and there was a long lineup actually. And I'm from Korea, and I'm speaker today. And and please give me. And he said, I have to run up. Regardless of your status as a speaker, you have to line up. It was a very long lineup, and I saw you in person. And there were young people. And they come up with a BYC membership and they just passed the line. That's what I ex actually experienced in the real world. It's like a free pass to enter the amusement park. So it was more like a benefit in the real world. So and actually, I was ah, telling them I was a speaker, so I am a, a very um, valuable, and I am a new here, but they never understand my situation. So you can see how that this can be used in the real life. NFT may be both said it is a dead industry. However, in the real world, many companies, of course, individual investors are not really considering about the NFT. However, many companies are putting up work to expand the scope of the NFT. So you have to think about the real world and the virtual slash digital areas at the same time. And NFT is like a linkage between these two spaces. So when you consider a broad um, scope of the NFT, you, these are the things that you have to consider, that whether the metadata that is for is, can be stored infinitely or the blockchain is infinite. Well, we have to think about these issues. Well, actually, this is uh, actually the NFT that I have. The many people wonder why it's so expensive. However, there is uh, this is a screen that you are seeing from the front end. However, when you think about the back end, you can see the metadata that it also displays who is the NFT owner and it also displays the NFT data. However, this data is being stored in the metadata. So the front end and the back end are the two different things and they are divided even though they combine all together to have one NFT. 
And this image shows how the NFT is being created and treated. So this is uh, this is not my lecture actually on the technology. So I'm just going to briefly show you the whole process, and it is more like an open resource to share. And there's a decentralized market, and there is an NFT project, and there's a centralized exchange. And you're familiar with some of these institutions. Between the decentralization and centralization, you can see the greater values in the decentralizations because within your device, there is a thing that you can have own to, ownership to. And some people mentioned about the interoperability. I think it is really important as well. Curtain, BSCC, Ethereum, and BSCC. So even you consider Tassel all together, you think there is a very important part that is crossing out here. And of course, there is um, copyright issues regarding this NFT. Of course, uh, the law is just catching up. But within the situation, the innovation is going to continuously taking place. Of course, the lows come after, and lows are just catching up, but the innovation is going to be accelerating. And some of you have a great asset, so if you want to inherit some of your assets and wealth to your children, you can use NFT as a lender, which is lender money. There is a great tax benefit. However, the government is strengthening its regulations and laws to prevent the money laundering with the NFT, and there is an NFT marketplace issues. And there is NFT plus DID, and as you can see from this image, they are being converged on together. And you can have the identifications online, and you and the verification will be available and will be possible on those technologies. And the utilization cases, well, NFT market can be categorized into three separate parts, and I'd like to show the authentic NFT, a functional NFT, and real-world NFT. And I'd like to stress that real-world NFT, and actually we are told, and we are waiting more on real-world NFT when it comes to NFT market. But before, it was more like uh, focusing on the virtual world. However, its boundary is extending to the real world. And digital assets and the NFT is being expanded towards the real world. So there are a lot of creators. They, this is NFT market segmentations. And IP, the carbon trade, and the real worlds are being connected to the NFT. That was the key message that I want to deliver from this slide. And there are different layers, as I told you before. And in one sentence or in conclusion, I can say that within one wallet, the traditional finance insurance and digital assets such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, NFT, CBDC will be all converged and combined together. So, as I told you before, you can earn the 50% of your salary in the traditional currency, but 50% in the cryptocurrency. So that is a possible future that we can think of. So I hope to have your collaboration. Thank you. Once again, please give a big round of applause. Was uh, Professor Yun Seok Bin to talk about the technology and the asset of the NFT and the industry trend in the future? Thank you very much, giving us much of the insight. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much. Now we are going to next presentation, which will be provided by Mr. Tami Ryu from Stika. Tami Ryu uh, is going to talk about the trends and evolution of crypto game industry. Blockchain game industry has experienced a huge growth, but the stagnation in growth of the P2E game and the required to be combined with the existing game and other regulation issues are in the market right now. The main trend of the blockchain game and whether uh, the blockchain game, game can be a new game changer in the position, we're going to think about that possibility in his presentation. Please give him a big round of applause. Uh, 
네, 안녕하세요. 저는 Good afternoon. I am director of BD in Saika, Ryu Insu. 네, 오늘 그 Today, I'm going to talk about the trends and evolution of crypto game industry. As I present, actually the, the detail can be different depending on the audience, but thankfully today I'll focus more on easy understanding rather than going too much in detail about the technology behind it in today's presentation. Let me briefly introduce myself first. I am working in Staika. Staika is one of the P2E projects. Blockchain uh, department is that is what I'm responsible for. Staika is first focused on developing digital wallet. We do have our own uh, asset management wallet in Staika. And also we do have M2E app. But I, haven't, I don't know whether you heard about uh, st uh, Stipend app. The similar, whether you climb the mountain or walk, then you can be rewarded with token. So the app is based on Solana infrastructure that is called Gazana, Gazago. So whether you climb the mountain or walk, then our token can be awarded to you. In the future, it can be expanded to the digital fitness app. And last but not least, we do have game, uh, the P2E game that is called Defend Go. So this is a game, as you play more, you can get more tokens. So you can get more profit. So this is the game that we are associated with the uh, the company that was already offered in the Japan, we're going to launch it there in Japan soon. We do another project as well that is called the Pi Golf, another P2E project. So you can think of it as a way that you can play in the golf zone in your home. So if you swing uh, the stick, then at home, you can enjoy the same golf courses. And by using the network, you can also uh, have a multiplayer game. And we also can open some championship, and the uh, reward can be awarded in a token or coin. So this is a project. This gold stick is sold around the world about 300,000 in number, and this will be launched 2024 next year. And also, this the ICO for this one is also in preparation. And I have done many investments related with infrastructure, related with the blockchain, also have involved in some consulting. And I'm the Korean business advisor of the Token Insight, which is one of the famous global coin uh, a appropriation uh, 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 agency. I have worked in software, AR, VR, and AI and blockchain business for more than 20 years now, and now I'm focusing on blockchain more. I gave my instruction a little uh, in detail, so it's been 20 years and I am working in blockchain I still am very hungry and working and learning for more knowledges as you already know the blockchain cycle and the Bitcoin cycle is changing because of not because of the social or economic changes but because of its own natural half-life cycle but after a uh, multiple half-life, actually, I haven't achieved much. That's what I'm thinking. Because when uh, the market is bull, then I enjoy it. And the market is fair, then I left the market. But in a different way, when I'm thinking of it, I think this is a time 
good, the best for starting a business or project. Because this is the end of the bear market. Because when we are nearing the end of the bear market, this is the best time for us to prepare for the bull market. If you get ready right now, then you will get the most of the benefit. Today, I'm going to talk about blockchain game. I'm not only enjoy or focus on games, rather I am a generalist involved in many different areas of IT, AI, uh, AR, VR, or metaverse, so on. The reason, even so, I'm focusing more on game. I believe game is a kind of a game changer because blockchain, even if you have one blockchain, it's very difficult for you to uh, buy a coffee. So coin, token, they are not actually embedded deeply in our real life. Rather, they are used for the storage of the value and asset or uh, accumulation of the worth. That's the purpose of the coins at, until now. Rather, we cannot use those coins directly in our daily life to buy something. So, in the public, for it to be naturally embedded in the life of the people, we have to have game changer. What can be a game changer? I believe game can be a game changer. When you think about in the past, so later part of 1990 or early part of 2000, internet was a boom. And one uh, big factor that made that boom possible was the game called StarCraft. The game StarCraft, the more people enjoyed that one, that made more PC room uh, established in the market. So on the very left, you see the screenshot of StarCraft game. And second, when do you think you use smartphone the most? Because I've been involved in IT for 20 years. But when I look back, Anypong, I heard that one day there was a game, Anipang, and, and also they said that they need hearts, and they asked for heart in Kakato. So back then, people installed Kakato, the message app, in order to play Anipang. So another game changer to bring more people in mobile world was also game, Anipang. And one of the most famous uh, blockchain game, P2E game, is Xe Infinity. I think it was first uh, came in the market back in 2016 or 17, maybe. It made a mega hit in the market globally. Even those who don't know blockchain or coin, they started to play this one in order to uh, earn more money. Same in the Southeast Asia. A whole village was zoned in this game, and they played it day and night. It was also coincidentally in the midst of the COVID-19. They cannot go out because of the quarantine, but they can earn some money while playing this game at home. By this, uh, this blockchain was deeply embedded in the daily life of people. So I think, and whenever we have new trends, the facilitator, the best facilitator to make the new trend uh, go deep in the lifestyle of the people, I believe that it's a game. The blockchain game, as you play a game more, you can get more rewards such like NFT or token. When it is connected with the Web 3.0, even if you play uh, Anypong as much as possible, that uh, Anypong company will not give you some stocks or some shares. Even if you play much time to play Lineage, you cannot get the dividend from uh, Lineage, or they will not share any profit with them. But P2E game is basically play to earn. You play game and you earn token. That's why the profit can be shared with all the people participating or playing the game as a whole.
The size of the blockchain gain it is only expected to grow in 2024. It'll take about 14% of the whole game market. There are many different kinds of games, console game, arcade game. Uh, there's a arcade game shop. The, the game store that you can punch or you can do the rhythm game, they are arcade game. There are also online game, Kart Rider, NCSoft, and uh, Minecraft. So mobile game, Anipang, and Cookie Monster, and other games are the, some example of mobile game. But when you think about the whole game market, the blockchain game is expected to take about 14% of the whole game market in 2024. And in 2025, it is expected that the blockchain game will take up 20% of the whole game market. This is the result of the uh, report that was surveyed and conducted by the, Mira, the Future Asset Security Research. So 42 trillion is a huge amount of money. We do have a lot of development in our mobile game, but in the Western world, they play more console game, for example, uh, PlayStation or Switch or Nintendo. And even so, it will take up more portions in the whole game market. And now, last year, Web 3.0, so people say Web 3.0, 3.0, so many times. And it was invested with about 10 trillion one amount of money last year. Then if they invested this amount of money, then they have to get the equivalent amount of profit, if not more. What will be the time that they will return or they will retrieve? Maybe I expect next year or the year after next year. The basis behind it is because the coin market or the crypto market, uh, we expect, and I have a huge confidence, that it will be another bull market next year or the year after next year. And if we think about the virtual cycle, that will invest more in the bear market and they will get more profit in the bull market. So those who do not do uh, well in investment, they go into the market in a bull market and they, they escape in the bear market. So we have Binance, Paradigm, and HiveMind, and there are many different exchange. And out of that, uh, the Anderson Horowitz is one of the biggest investment. They have about $2 billion that is about 7.2, so that is about uh, 300 billion worth of money in Korean won. I will be uh, very simple in explaining. So Web 3.0 is uh, in progress, and the future will come soon enough. Web 3.0, I think some of you would know it very well. Some of you will be very familiar. Web 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. In one, web, it is in evolution in its phase from 1 to 3. In Web 1.0, the most successful company was Google. Searching uh, the information and retrieve those information. So searching is the core. And Google uh, made the most of that research and search as an engine and it got the hegemony in Web 1.0 era, and we went to the Web 2.0. It's not only searching information and reading information, rather we also have to contribute more in creating those information. When you go to Facebook, you can read others' information, but you also can write down some information. So it is not only reading, but also rewriting by doing so, you can create information. So Facebook was the winner in the Web 2.0. But in Web 1.0 or 2.0, just because they are succeeded, it doesn't mean that you can uh, get some of those profits. I also was contributed to creating more information in Web 2.0, but the profit is not coming to me. 
But what about Web 3.0? We can read and write information, and also I can get the ownership of the information that I have written. Down. Compared to Facebook, if I upload the contents, then I can get some shares or stop. And the profit can be shared with me because the ownership is on me. And I can get the reward in uh, the form of token or coin or other digital assets. That is Web 3.0. So uh, the protagonist of Web 3.0 would be. I believe the wallet company. The one who owns the wallet who rule the 3.0. So the one who uh, have the most number of users in their wallet, that company will be the winner in Web 3.0. So inventing and developing wallet is really important, and I have to expand the user of that wallet as much as possible. So at Web 1.0, 2.0, 1.3.0, we have definite winner, but in addition to that, as an application, game is also a really huge factor. Game has been very important all throughout the year from Web 1.0 to Web 3.0. Web, the game is a really important content. We have to keep an eye on games. Can blockchain game be a game changer? So Angry Bird is on the right side, which was a huge success in the market. Now it's not that uh, famous as it was in the past, but still. Why do you think the game would be a really critical content? I thought about it a lot. Even if I invest in a game much of my time, it's only because it's fun. A company adopt uh, the blockchain, do you think they will adopt it in the early stage? If they fail, if they fail, then the one who argue for adopting it would get fired. So without being uh, fully validated in the market, the businesses or companies, the large companies will not adopt it seriously. But for game, they play game, not because it's validated, but because it's fun. So regardless of the type of the platform, game has to be the game changer in the beginning stage. Because just because you play the game, it will not go wrong. You play the game for fun, and you enjoy uh, the game, then that's it. And, but if company adopt coin or token, if the solution is not validated, then maybe the result can be very, very bad. That's why without that kind of risk, game should be the first thing that we test the water in the beginning stage. So distributed ledger is the main part of the blockchain game. One that I really like is the money of internet. That's my favorite phrase as definition of a blockchain or programmable money. So it's money, but you can make it a program. It's related with a smart contract. Why do we invest in coin and token? Why do we have to create or mint coin? It's because it's used in the global level. Just because you have some uh, some points in some of the system in Korea doesn't mean that they can be widely and commonly used in the U.S. as well. You have to have a global uh, term and currency in order for it to be converted into their own currency and be used anywhere in uh, the world. And micro payment. You can buy coin 0.00001 worth of Bitcoin, but you cannot do the same for the euro or other currency. And digital wallet. So for today, have you used your um, cash? How about yesterday or last week? I haven't used cash much. 
When I uh, use public transportation, I use credit cards or just my cell phone. But if digital wallet is come deeply into our lifestyle, then we do need some credit card that would be the role of the digital wallet. So digital wallet would be the key point of the Web 3.0. So my asset, at the end of the day, stock, bond, Bitcoin, it's very in, not, it's not convenient to have very different kind of method. So maybe we can put all those assets into digital wallet and swap them any way we want. And now you have to log in in Naver. You have to put in your password and ID to log in. How about in the future? Maybe we can do the login just with my digital wallet. If I write down something in my blog in a neighbor, then maybe we can add some advertisement there. Then we can get the reward, and the reward will go directly to my digital wallet. In order for us to have that interface, automatic interface, we have to have the vitalization of use of digital wallet in the real life. And metaverse and NFT will be expanded further. In order for them to be expanded, the game should be the first thing that would be used in the platform. However, so how about the P2E game? What is the perception of the people about P2E game? More people are playing game to earn money. Game is supposed to be fun, but game right now is more like a labor, not entertainment. XC Infinity, you play the game to earn money. That's labor, not entertaining. Game should be fun. It, it uh, made a success in the beginning. Now it has some kind of stagnation. It's because it's not fun enough. Rather, right now it is perceived as a part of the gambling. And North America or other uh, area, the real game developers and users, they have a uh, huge resistance against the NFT or P2E because they believe that they really like the game. It's a pure love for the game, but P2E and NFT, because of their adoption, then even if they don't play the game well enough, they can buy some paid items and can win or win the game. So then we say that the balance in the game between the fun and the payment is broken down. That's why those pure game fans, they don't like a P2E or NFT. And there are many games that try to adopt P2E or NFT, but because of the resistance of the users, they just uh, refuse or repeal that um, suggestion. And so NCSoft also did the same in the past. So the developers are very cautious because of this, especially in uh, North America or other. That is different in Korea. Then Marble come to or we made uh, we competitively adopt uh, the blockchain or NFT. We're very fast. We try to adopt something uh, faster than others. But other countries and regions are not the same. And about 10 or 20 years ago, so the scandal about the Bada, the sea story, was a huge uh, trauma. And if someone said that I play game to earn money, then they first think about the C story, the scandal in the past. So in such cases, the rating itself is impossible in Korea because of the C story scandal. We uh, have the uh, the entity that do the rating and the categorizing the level of the game. That was part of the media rating in the past, but after this Sea Story scandal, there was another separated game rating entity. And when they hear that the game, when play this game, when we play this game, we can earn money, they first think about Sea Story and they cancel the game. And out of uh, the whole countries in the world, 
Korea and China this earning money while playing games, it is not approved. And partially approved in Japan and Singapore when some of the conditions are met. And rest of the world, they actually do not have a strict regulation on or prohibiting against this uh, kind of game. When you look at it, there's a game. You play a game very hard and you will be rewarded with a coin or token. And then maybe you can go to the virtual exchange, the coin exchange to convert it into cash. That is the basic cycle. But that token or coin, what about looking at them not coin or uh, token, but a gift card? And then you go to the, uh, the uh, converting agency. If you think about that way, it's nothing different from the C story scandal. That's why in Korea it is not approved very easily. So the, there's no uh, minting cap, so they distribute and issuing those coins and tokens unlimitedly, and the price is dropping down, and then people will have huge damage because of that. Because of that kind of frequent scandals, actually this became a huge issue. And uh, the, there are many uh, agencies related with the P2E, and from next year, we are going to have a institutionalization effort started in earnest for the P2E and decentralization. And we will have more strengthened protection on uh, those users and investors on coins and tokens. And also, we are going to impose some taxes on the profit people get from um, the coins and tokens next year or the year after next year would be, I believe, good time before all those things being institutionalized for the individuals to get some profits. It's a matter of perception. So, another uh, characteristic is that it, they are very susceptible to the external situation. As you can see here, when you see the graph, this is the graph of coin, the governance tokens, trends of the price from 2021 till now. When it is on peak, it went all the way up to $160. And it's right now 120 because right now it is 5.9 dollars. So it is not only this one, but also Stephen and others. The same, their price uh, went down about 120. I'm not sure whether anybody over here uh, invested uh, money in Axiom or other games. This is also related with the uh, the whole market situation of the blockchain. But if the market is going to the bull market again, then maybe we will have another vitalization of P2E game. I have met many VC investing in the blockchain overseas. When I have discussions with them last year and this year, when I talk about uh, the uh, P2E uh, game investment, they just say P2E no, because uh, existing P2E tokens, games, they only mint more tokens, because they are only rewarding those people playing game. That's why it leads to the token inflation. So token is being distributed in the market, not be re not be retrieved. That's why the token price is only going down. When you think about the conventional games, I can buy some items, I can uh, do something. Other than uh, getting token, there are more uh, rewards. Because the uh, P2E game, there are no other rewards but token. So we only have inflation. The price is going to drop. And because um, the demand is down, so uh, people try to sell out. More people try to sell out. 
Then those who are looking forward to having more profit, if their value of the token is going down, then they will not play the game anymore. And this is the vicious circle. We call it a death spiral, a P2E game. So same was something that we experienced in the Luna scandal early this year because the price was going down continuously. Without uh, the uh, self-monetization or the privatization model, this that spiral is only uh, the result. That is the Ponzi scandal. So only the, the project can be survived only when the newcomers are coming in the market. Then is the cycle of the Ponzi scam. So what do we have to prepare now? We have the wallet competition, and we have to go transition to the multi-chain. There was a base on Ethereum before, and it expanded to Polygon right now. We have to secure more users by using more chain and going to more chain. We have to preserve the balance of the game in itself. That means we have to make the game fun enough until the end. Too much focus on earning money is not the way that we can go forward. The first principle is fun game. Without that principle kept, then that spiral is the only destined future of the game. If the game itself is really fun enough, then it will have its own internal profit model. Maybe people, because it's fun, they will buy um, NFT, they will uh, pay some annual subscription fee. That should be combined with the token. Without that, they only have to rely on token model, and that's not the way. And we also have this uh, term coined, the currency sync. People have to buy NFT continuously. NFT, PV2, the users, they compete against each other. The user, the, win, uh, the winner will have their own uh, reward, that means free fee for a conversion or uh, getting it as cash. And also, the governance token and the utility coins, they have to be separated from one another. And if we have different phase in, the be in uh, between, that is really good, because that will give some latency for people converting those tokens into cash. So dual token economy to have utility token, governance token, or the better will be we have a uh, platform token. That means we have really good currency distancing with one another. And we also can talk about non-P2 and P2 bridge model. The P2 game itself to secure users, there's limitation because not many people know much about how to install wallet and they have to go extra mile to install a game that they will not do that. So we have to have a bridge model for people to install blockchain and then go to games. So I will wrap up my presentation here. As I mentioned earlier, now I think it's really high time for us to start the project. The Web 3.0, the time for Web 3.0 will come soon. And the killer item for Web 3.0 and the game changer should be game. And blockchain has its own cycle. 2020, 2021, we have bull market. And naturally, next year and the year after next year, we will have another bull market. So with that bull market, we have to bloom and also have to prepare for the next bear market. Then we have to uh, enjoy the bloom, blooming of year next year and the year after next year. This is a really critical time for us to prepare everything. We are in the golden time. I hope more good projects are coming in the market, and I hope more company with the wallet technology and also P2E. If you give more attention to them, the ecosystem will grow further, and the development of the technology will also be helpful. Thank you very much. Please give him a big round of applause.
recap today's conference. We saw that the blockchain is the main uh, technology to utilize the interaction between the user and the technology. However, the basic trilemma of the, uh, the blockchain as a distributed computing technology, such as improved processing speed, completing decentralization and security reliability, has been the obstacle to the evolution of the internet that everyone dream of. In this context, the emergence of the third generation of ultra-fast decentralized blockchain, Tassel, that are ushering in a new future for the internet is significant. Tassel blockchain is a third generation public blockchain and implements a dual chain algorithm that generates blocks at high speed, a stable and efficient operation system for distributed storage through the completed application of market tree technology and a connected transaction solution that maximizes security without bridges as its core technology element. The evolution of blockchain as a TASA will mark the dawn of the Web 3.0 era and by extension create the cornerstone of universal computing. Today, we had the opportunity to experience the past, present, and future of blockchain all in one day. We introduced uh, all of that in one day. We introduced the Tassel engine mainnet technology that is emerging as a third generation blockchain and touched on the future value of blockchain. And also, we experienced the effort and vision of revitalizing the ecosystem of Tassel. We also studied the innovation opportunity in various industries based on Tassel, attended in Tassel Blockchain Conference 2023. Here, we are experiencing the hyper connected society of the future. That concludes today's session. Now, we declare the closing of today's conference. Please give a bigger round of applause just like you have done in the opening. So today, we're going to close the Sasser Blockchain Conference 2023. We are officially closing today's conference. Thank you very much. This brings us to the end of the SASA Blockchain Conference 2023. My name is Kim Minji, the MC of today's conference. Thank you very much.